song I've been singing over and over again. Jesus, Jesus.
Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayer. Oh Lord, it's our Father. I ask of thee one thing this afternoon. That the inner eyes of understanding of your children is opened completely. Beyond the text of what will be taught this afternoon. Beyond the prepared text. Let them find revelation. Profitable for living. Profitable for growth. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord God, the purpose for which we are gathered this afternoon. In the eternal agenda you have for every life. It will not be a waste. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name we have prayed. You want to give Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's exciting to see us all again. It's a great privilege to stand before you. Yeah. The last time we converged like this was um, uh, at this scale, at this size, was May 20, if I'm very correct. May 20, 20 uh, 2023. We thank God for his mercies. Ah, Nigeria is a lot right now. Nigeria is a lot, but we thank God for his mercies. It's not exactly easy anywhere. It is not exactly easy anywhere. And that is why the subject, you know, a lot of people are wondering, is Toluji trying to start a church? Or what, what exactly is happening? It's like he has dumped worship, dumped music for teaching. There is a basis. There is a reason. Like I told my people, because the mandate that was given to me, 2020, 18 after we closed the first crusade very close there at liberty stadium was returned back my eyes was on lagos of course everything lagos is always loud it's always big gets a lot of noise unlike you guys here we have to practically wind you motivate you push you you're just in your world and god said to me return back to Ibado. go into the interior parts of southwest and go and raise for me a people i will use in the corridors of the nations that was how many years ago? Over four years now. I've seen that prophecy come to pass over and over and over again. God is raising people from here. God is raising not just ordinary people. And it is very responsible of me that when I see patterns over a city, my duty as an apostle, not by title, apostle by office and by function, it's not by the title, is to draw people's attention to how this cycle of limitation has held people bound over many years. That is what I'm teaching. But the expression you knew was the worship, was the loud music and all of that. But hey, there is a reason why I'm teaching right now. I pray and I hope people are listening because it appears people are not listening. Engaging Babylon 1 and 2 was mostly watched by pastors. And I was wondering, the people I even preached the message to, they didn't return back there. But pastors called me. I shared a fly in the discipleship group. Pastors called me, Toluchi, <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to change the title. You called your own Engaging Babylon. I will call my own Confronting Babylon. <laughs> we saw one flower during the week. Is that your church? Invading Babylon. It's okay. Do anything you want with Babylon. <laughs> but what am I saying? That's to tell you that the, the content is so instructive that people that are already in leadership now, they are seeing the value. But the same people we are teaching, they don't understand. But you know what, like I was telling some of these guys that were misbehaving last night, I said, I said, God forbid, some of you, with tears in your eyes, you return back and go listen 10 years' time. May that not be your own testimony. <laughs> but it will happen to some people. Yeah. The truth you refuse to imbibe today is tears of tomorrow, is peril of tomorrow. Okay? So please, I hope you are here to really listen. I know a lot of you came for various reasons. Some people came because, ah, it's, it looks like another mass revival crusade is coming. This is the only window by which I can, I can be a volunteer. Like one guy told me, he said, ah, five years I've been dreaming of just being a part of this volunteer. It's okay to be a volunteer, but I will not confront God. I will not stand before God on the last day and tell him all I raised was volunteers. I want to start before him in the last day and tell him proudly, boldly, with my shoulders up, that hey, 
You remember this lady? She's in this continent. Yes, yeah, she was the one that shot down this nation, brought a hundred thousand souls to you. You remember that brother? Yes, she was the apostle. Ah, it's okay to clap. She was the apostle we put over media and entertainment. This is what his movies, this, that, his television network, this is what he has done. Oh, you remember that short girl? She's not too, she's not tall, she's not short. She's just vertically challenged. <laughs> she was the one we positioned in tech. And see what she has done. The biggest tech platforms promoting the gospel across the nations was from her. She runs a multi-billion pound company. That's what they have done for you. That is the kind of CV. I want to bring to God on the last day. I don't just want to walk up to God and tell him, ah, we are filled up at the massive stadium. People filled it up before me. When I'm gone, when you lower me to the grave, people will still fill it up. So it's not by filling up stadiums. It's not, it's not a race for the biggest events. Are you following me? That's why I call this place an assembly of kings and priests. A room of influencers. Because that's the future. When I look at your head, your face, that is what I see. And that is what it will be. Except for those who have signed a deal with the devil themselves. That is what it must be. Because I always say it's very humbling. Some three, four days ago, I received a mail called to a very global conversation as the only Nigerian. And I'm like, how can God raise that boy from militia? And it's just open up. <laughs> For every expression of what you see God do with me, he can do worse with you in multiplicity. When I woke up December 15 last year, I said, 2023 was the year of Holy Ghost flight. I wish I knew what I was even saying because right now I'm tired of flying. You think it's logical to fly? Start flying. If you're very restless like I am, you know what it means to be grounded 22 hours on the spots. But for every expression of what God is doing with me, except the anointing does not flow from top down. It has to touch every soul, every person. Are you following me? So I hope you are here to listen. I hope you are here to learn. Yes, we have conversations, yeah? Crusades, ah, and I have a very fantastic information that will blow your mind. <laughs> that will what? Blow your mind. To let you know that mass movement is not a joke. We might appear very unserious. I might look very woke. You know, I, I love you. If you follow me on Instagram, I love using the hashtag, not your regular man of God. Yes, I'm not your regular man of God. May your life, life not lack results. Yeah. For your life not to lack results, that's where, why I'm talking. That's where I've toned down music. If I announce the worship meeting, you can be sure this place will be filled to Joyce B. Right? Good. Generals are never made in public. Now. Nah. Generals are never made in the metropolis. Generals are always made in caves. They're always made in the darker side of the desert. Like I told them when we had our first half year prayer meeting in this same room, I told them, I said, if I don't, it's not where we are here right now. 12 hours, I think we did 24 hours fast. 12 hours prayer drill in this same place. A lot of things happen. No? It's only crusade, you know. Ah, a lot of things happen. And I told them, we published a document called the Ring Road Declaration what we want to see in the mass movement in the next 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, when I'm no more, that night. And I told them, I said, someday in the future, you will write your memoirs as a governor of a state. You write your memoirs as a president of a nation. You write your memoirs as the head of boards, and you will refer back to this room. I remember that night when we published Ring Road Declaration. Every semblance of what was in that book has happened in my life. That will be your testimony. With this, you can have your seat. I welcome you once again. It's a pleasure to see you. I welcome all the Mass Discipleship alumni, alumni of the Mass Discipleship School. Raise your hands. If you're in here, plenty of you. Welcome back. Ancestors, you are welcome. Okay? We acknowledge all our friends from Interland. Abel Kuta folks, are you here? Abel Kuta Hall, they're just picking up. Okay, just two of you. God bless you. Ogumosho, are they here? Are they here? Ogumosho, how many of them? About five. Okay, God bless you. On your town, Oh, God bless you. I go away. I mean, anywhere outside the Badon. Anywhere outside the Badon. Any other place I've not called. Ilesha, Oshobo, Ileife. Is Ileife here? Okay. Let me thank all our out outreach hubs, revival hubs, um, Bodija, Ojo. You've done very exceptionally well. Fantastic outreaches across the year. Uh, Northwest Hub, God bless you. Don't fant if I Northwest Hub has kept me busy for the past three to four weeks. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, remind me, okay, I do hope. God bless you guys. A lot, of, a lot of you are not functioning, so that's why you are looking strange. 
But let me appreciate everybody that labors genuinely. Loud Tech Hub, God bless you. I, I spent an entire weekend with them just uh, about two weeks ago, uh, discipling and teaching. Uh, Ibano Central, Mokola, and the likes, are they here too? You guys have been very silent. Even though one of their char chairperson lives inside the same house with me. Okay, we are watching you in 3D. God bless you. Yes, I will not forget. Tolu Olorum. Good. I wanted her to share a testimony. Come, come. Thank God I did not forget. What's the time now? Can I have a timer somewhere so I can pace myself? The teaching is two straight hours. Okay. I want her to share a testimony because, I mean, it amplifies the little point I have. I hope you got the point of that testimony. I hope you got the point of that testimony. Now, if she had compromised, she would have still been at low level, enjoying where she was. But because she honored God in private, God elevated and brought her to manager level. I, I had to bring her to share that testimony for you to know that, see, some of these things we teach, they are real. I teach because I've passed through this system. By the grace of God, I spent not less than 15 good years of my life working. Okay, 10 straight years in finance, core finance. So what she's talking about, I understand. When you have to window dress, you know, we have very corporate te terminologies for all this nonsense. That's what it's called, window dressing. It's like a grave. You know what is beneath the grave is rotting. But you put marble on top of it. Some even build a mausoleum, very big, magnificent. But what is beneath the grave? You present a very bad case. Make it very good looking. So I understand where she's coming from. I have to bring her. So some of these things we talk about, they happen. They are real. You are in a space of life where maybe you are immune to them. But as you begin to grow, as God begins to raise you, you will see a lot of this. You will see a whole lot of this. And it's even worse. More. So that is why I'm doing this teaching. All right? So like I always love to say, the balance of living life is wisdom and power. Your generation is very loud on power, which is very good. There are some things that wisdom will not do for you. Of course, you know that the mass movement, we have, I mean, that's why we have revival meetings. That's why we have all those crusades, power meetings, the spirit of God, I mean, flowing, slaying people, just, Holy Spirit just displaying. But beyond all of that, one evil I've also seen, a lady that just finished slaying under the Holy Spirit, right now, the next minute, you are removing her from who doing who cop, the same girl that was speaking in tongues very loudly, and you are wondering what is happening. There is a balance to life. There is a wisdom that is derivable from scriptures that should transform the way we live. But the problem we have is people are not transformed. We are only seeing religion. We are only seeing Christianity. Tomorrow morning, all the churches will be filled. Why has Nigeria not changed? There is a portal on that road. I saw one car run into it almost some assorted last night. It is still there. If somebody does not make noise, one more time, it will still be there. There are people who are professing guys speaking in tongues in the York State Road Maintenance Agency. They have never been able to get to that point where they can translate their tongues to building nations. If Nigeria will change in your own time, you cancel generation. You're always fast to type, always fast to tweet, always fast to post. But the way you are living your life right now is nothing different from the people that went ahead of you. So the way Nigeria will look in your time, we're already seeing it from the way you live right now. Living life successfully is a balance of wisdom and power. First Corinthians 1, 23 to 24. He said, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews. It is a stumbling block. They don't want to hear it. To the Greeks, it is nonsense. It is foolishness. He said, but what? But to those who are called, both Jews or Greek, to those who are called, whether Jew or Greek, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Let me read it from a more contemporary translation. 1 Corinthians 1, 23 to 24. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended. And the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Living life successfully, gaining mileage in life is a balance of wisdom and power. So that's why I call this meeting a wisdom meeting. There is a wisdom that is already embedded in the scriptures that should guide every part of our life. In fact, you know what? Daily application of wisdom is already power on the go. Now, let me break it down for you. There is a biblical wisdom that should apply to healthy living. You don't eat well. You don't eat balanced. You don't, you don't rest. You keep working. You will walk that body to a point that you require a miracle. Yes or no? 
What was the cause of the problem? It was not the devil. The cause of that problem was not the devil. It was self-inflicted. You now need a divine intervention to solve what wisdom should have resolved. That is the way a lot of us live our lives. There is a wisdom, biblical wisdom to managing finance. You are reckless with spending. Very impulsive buyer. You buy at will and you want to build a corporation. How? No discipline to saving. No discipline to budgeting. No, no. How? You will always be broke. And you'll not be singing Moria Nubao. The more you are singing Moria Nubao, heaven is looking away. You keep singing, they are looking away. And they're like, no. First time we had mercy on you. We called your uncle that did not remember you for 25 years. All of a sudden, he sent you 500K. You build the 500K. Started buying all the wigs that you was not in the plan two months ago. All the shoes you wanted to buy, not in the plan one month ago. You bought everything. Now money is finished. Moria Nubao again. Ah. Hey, it's our daughter. Let's pity her. And they do what? 24 hours. Miracle alert. Bah! You get alert. You blow that again. You will continue singing Moria and Uber. Everyone will not answer anymore. They will expect you to grow up to maturity where you, you can now, by wisdom, manage the affairs of your life. So life is a delicate balance of what? Power and wisdom. When the devil shows up, yes, we deploy power. That's why we carry it. When we come face to face with demons, we deploy power. That is why we carry it. Okay? But there is a part of your life that wisdom can manage. And let me tell you, the age bracket a whole lot of us are right now, you are in that age that wisdom can give you mileage. That is why you have young people, they don't speak in tongues, but they thrive. They do well. They don't go to church as much as you do, but they are doing well. They have a certain discipline to managing finance. They have a certain discipline to do what? Taking an idea, staying on it till it grows to fruition. But we, we keep waiting on the God of miracles. Does God do miracles? Yes, he does miracles. Till tomorrow, he does miracles. But there is a part that wisdom can manage. Let me start it from there this, this afternoon. So officially, I say welcome to Engaging Babylon 3. Officially. Yeah. We have a lot to talk about this afternoon. I'm going to run all, all, all true. I'm going to run all what all true. There is a wisdom that those who survived the civilization called Babylon, a city that was once was, that does not exist anymore, but the spirit still runs till today. Something about that city. The city has ceased to exist over 4,000 years, but the spirit of that city is still at work till now. But there is a wisdom, biblical wisdom, of several personalities in the Bible. They, they did not only survive that system, they thrived and they excelled in that system, despite the fact that that system was very godless. And that is what we have been studying. So please, if you have not listened to Engaging Babylon 1 and 2, refer back because today is a continuation of two so at again you babylon 2 i started with what i started with a personality called nehemiah now let's read from book of second chronicles 15 3 to 4 second chronicles 15 3 to 4 for a long time israel had been without the true god without a teaching priest and without the law for a long time israel had been without the true god a teaching priest and without the law. Verse 4. But when in their trouble they turned to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found by them. What is, it, what, what is that scripture saying? There is a tripod on which a true nationhood is built. True nationhood that will be built on righteousness. It is built on three legs. Three legs provides the first kind of balance for anything. That is why a, keke, a, a bike cannot be as balanced as a kekena pep. A keke and a pep cannot be as balanced as a vehicle that moves on four legs. But the first position of balance to anything that has legs is what? Three. Four, and, you know, and for every true nationhood, three things must be present. Three tripods must be present. One, one true God who is already present. God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. Teaching priests. That is the office I'm functioning in right now. There must be that voice that gives counsel. Some of you that will become leaders of systems, of companies, of corporations, of even ministries. This is a tripod that must guide the formation of your system. Teaching priests, that's the office, unfortunately, and the law. What is the law? We are already given in the scriptures. That is the basis of everything that forms Christianity. Christianity is not self-opinion. Christianity is not philosophy. Christianity is not ideology. Every wisdom that we imbibe is taken from the law. The scriptures. So for righteousness to be entrenched or enthroned in any system, 
among any people, the tripod legs of a godly nation must be present. Acknowledgement of the one true God, a teaching priest, and the law. And that is why we are looking at the law right now. We are looking at the scriptures, the perfect law of liberty. Now follow me, Romans 15, 4. I started, the last, I started the last class with this. You know, I call this a Bible study on, on, on Saturday morning. That's fine. For whatsoever things were written in time past, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. See, the scripture is the picture of your future. You guys love to pray. It is beautiful. I love it. But this Bible we have in our hands, it is not just a set of storybooks. It is not just an historical compendium of a nation because that is what the woke world is telling we, you Gen Z generation. Oh, the Bible is just, just the way you have uh, your Yoruba history. Oh, the Dua came from somewhere called the uh, Middle East. They said it was Mecca. Nobody was there. Who was there? Were you there? Was your father there? Was your grandfather there? Okay, we agreed. There, another postulation says, oh, the Dua came from heaven. He descended with a cock in his hand and a god of sand and a chain and all kinds of ridiculous postulations. But we believe. So there is a postulation that suggests or that proposes, oh, the Bible is also a compendium of history for a nation called Israel. So don't take it serious. It is just the history of some set of families. Why would the entire world be subject to the historical antecedents of a nation? No, the Bible is beyond a storybook. In fact, there is a book that I think every young person must read. It's so scarce. I don't know. I don't know I can get a copy. Maybe you guys have to photocopy the Bible code. One of the first books that, read, that changed my perspective to the Bible as a, young, as a young teen, the Bible code. By research, science, conducted what was that school? Was it MIT or Harvard? I can't remember. That the Bible is actually a computer programming language. Yeah, established in science. That the Bible, that Bible you hold, is actually a computer programming language. And events that have happened in time past were seen. The ones that happened in the future were seen. As in, I was, I remember reading that book, I was shaking. It was, it, the book was written by an ex-CIA agent who did not believe, does, does not believe God. Does not believe in God, does not believe God exists, he's an atheist. So to run that research, he had to read the Bible and he said, I found no book on earth that had as much truth as the Bible. So please, I implore you, study. The same measure, I see people praying and they're not studying and that's why they are praying amiss. That is why there is a lot of prayer meetings and no results. People's prayers are not founded in doctrine. It's not founded on the basis of the Bible. People are praying emotional-driven prayers. People are praying according to their greed. So let's get into this story. Engaging Babylon 3 is a continuation of Engaging Babylon 2. And somewhere in between, I will introduce another character. You know, this is a movie production. We've been producing a movie, right? Yeah. So we are now on season 2, episode Nehemiah 5, 1 to 13. You have a lot to learn. Nehemiah 5, 1 to 13. Be ready to read with me very fast. About this time, some of the men and their wives raised a cry of protest against their fellow Jews. So you know where we are coming from. If you don't know where we are coming from, go online, go and listen to Engage the Bible too. So the, the a set of returnees are now back in homeland. They are back to Judah, Jerusalem. People were once in Babylon. Now Cyrus the king gave them an exit, okay? and they moved in different batches. First batch led by Ezra. Now there is a second batch led by Nehemiah. And he came to Jerusalem, and the first need he saw in Jerusalem was to do what? Rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. So now let's go. About this time, some of the men and their wives raised a cry of protest against their fellow Jews. They were saying, we have such large families, we need more food to survive. Others said, we have mortgaged our fields and vineyards and homes to get food during the famine. Another said, we have had to borrow money on our fields and vineyards to pay, to pay our taxes. Okay, verse 5. We belong to the same family as those who are wealthy and our children are just like theirs. Yet, we must sell our children into slavery just to get enough money to live. We have already sold some of our daughters and we are helpless to do anything about it. For our fields and vineyards are already mortgaged. I mean, you saw that picture very well. When I heard their complaints, I was very angry. After thinking it over, I spoke out. <laughs> Think before you speak. After thinking it over, 
When people bring reports, you don't just jump to conclusion. You know the way Nigerian police station works? I hope there's no policeman here. I come and arrest me, it's fine, it's okay. Two people are fighting. The first person that gets to the station to report is acquitted. It does not matter whether I was the one who caused that problem. Do you get what I'm saying? A reasonable leader, when a complaint is made, thinks, reveals the situation. Never jump to conclusion. It has led people down the path of trouble. Never jump to conclusion on any matter. Reveal. After thinking, he said, though he was angry, but he still thought. Most of the rashest decisions men have ever made was when they were angry. Ah, I can be very temperamental. I know myself. I know my weakness. Most of the craziest decisions I've ever made that I had to regret was made in the fury of anger. A reasonable leader does what? I was very angry. But after thinking it over, I looked at the pros and cons. The consequences of if I keep silent, what will happen? If I speak loud, if I take a punitive or a disciplinary me measure, what will be the consequence? After thinking it over, I spoke against these nobles and officials. I told them, you are hurting your own relatives by charging interest when they borrow money. Then I called the public meeting to deal with the problem. I hope you are following. It's right on the screen. At the meeting, I said to them, we are doing all we can to redeem our Jewish relatives who have had to sell themselves to pagan foreigners. But you are selling them back into slavery again. How often must we redeem them? And they had nothing to say in their defense. Then I pressed further. What you are doing is not right. Should you not walk in the fear of our God in order to avoid being mocked by our enemy nations? Do not forget, recap from engaging Babylon 2. The purpose of restoring that wall was to protect the identity of the people, even though that was not the communication to the king. The communication to the king was a form of, okay, a defense. Oh, a city without a wall is exposed, is vulnerable to attacks. But to them, it was the restoration of the dignity of a people. Now the same people who now live in Jerusalem, the city of the Lord, Jews by talk, Jews by appearance, Jews by dressing, a certain practice was still going on in that same Jerusalem, a carryover practice that they brought from Babylon. What were they doing? They were lending money to their brothers, what you call Sogun Dogoji. When they were in Babylon, they were lending money from pagans, pagan wealthy men. So at the time of their exit back to Jerusalem, they had to pay back and redeem those, you know what, what your call call one for more singer. Do you understand? A child is used as a collateral for a loan. They had a community of sorts. They had to redeem them so that they can join them back to Jerusalem. But hey, these same people are back in Jerusalem and the Babylonian practice continued. Because I'm sure somebody's wondering, why are we still talking about this? They are now in Jerusalem. They are now in the promised land. By bloodline and by their ancestry, yes, they are Jews, but they are practiced. They are Babylonians. And the same thing also obtains in the kingdom of God today. Professing Christians, appearing Christians, your turban can cover your entire hair. We might not say a strand of hair. But your character, you are not different from the charlatan that does not know Christ in any way. That was what was happening there. People, brothers, started enslaving brothers all over again. So what am I saying? You can be a Christian. You can be a Christian. You can profess to be a Christian. But your lifestyle is completely at variance to what the kingdom says. Your business, the way you run your business, your, that's why I called her to share that testimony. He said, I'm an elder in my church. Appearing Christian. Professing Christian. Functioning, serving Christian. And you know what it means to be an elder? You know the specification of the Bible? To be appointed an elder, an husband of one wife. People are impeccable in character. People of good reputation. Do you understand? So how can an elder find himself in that community of madness? And he's not even recruiting. <laughs> he's not able to recruit in with I mean new hands what, what, what does that tell you that is the exact picture of what I'm painting here Christians by identity Christians by speech Christians by office but the very life they live the mindset that runs their business because what was happening there the same Babylonian practice of exerting Israel interest from their fellow man of enslaving one another which is something that in the laws of Moses, the laws that was given to the nation of Israel, it was expressly spoken against, and I will show you in the Bible. Was he being, was he what? 
was still in operation. All slaves were renewed, new slaves were being made, completely against the law of Moses. Now, go to me to Deuteronomy 23, 19 to 20. Deuteronomy 23, 19 to 20. What did he say? Do not charge a fellow Israelite interest. Law of Moses, hand it down. Whether on money or food or anything else that may earn interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but not a fellow Israelite. So that the Lord your God may bless you in everything you put your hand to. In the land you are entering to possess. How did these people forget? They had been in Babylon long enough that the practice of Babylon, where does it start from? Who can, who can remind me from engaging Babylon on this four-level strategy to Babylonian conversion? Ah, who can? Um, <laughs> who can? <laughs> they are looking at their faces. If you are bold, stand up. The righteous is bold as a lion. Stand up. Stand up, stand up and tell me. <laughs> uh, you, see, you see why we have to put some crews in messages he could not remember the scripture but he remember the crews <laughs> yeah professor recruitment. recruitment Babylon is always recruiting Babylon is always hunting for the best go and find me this Babylon this gentleman young apt in knowledge if you have come of it, you'll have seen an evil under heaven. There are people that start out very exceptional. Most times they don't end up like that. Babylon comes taking them down. Because when they are young, opportunities will start coming at that level. But they don't have the requisite consecration to handle the kind of opportunities they get. Dilution. Recruitment? Dilution. Dilution. Teach them our Babylonian practice. Teach them our literature our language, our culture. Substitute what they brought from Israel with what we practice. Three. Eh? Indoctrination. <laughs> Indoctrine. Number four. Eh? Eh? Pollution. Identity. Before you know what's up, you don't know yourself anymore. You are completely changed. The only thing that carries the tag Christian. It's just that tag. is a Christian. You are completely gone. That was exactly what was happening right there. They lost themselves. The fact that they had now even returned back to homeland did not make them wake up. Hey, we are in homeland. That's what happens in, in, in Pasha, where we're coming from. We need to stop this. We are now back to God's own country. It still continued. A people who had lost themselves. Babylon is so strong. And listen to me. When you find yourself in leadership in any system, <laughs> I love what she did. Always profile people who call themselves believers, especially under you and above you. Look at the construct of how they live their life. Whether their profession is in tandem, is in alignment with how they live. If you do not find that experience, it is time to do what? Start, start a reform. That's what Lehman did. It is time to do what? Reform that system. It is time to do what? Call a consciousness. This is not how we were taught to live. That is what makes you an ambassador of the kingdom of God. But what do we do? We, we, eat, we just, okay, I'm not part of them. I'll just look away. We are, look away. You will look away. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know when they say, don't listen to secular music. Don't listen to secular music, right? You know the way secular music gets you. Imagine yourself in a, is there any garage around Challenge? Is there any park? Is there any park, garage? Challenge. Eh? Challenge, Challenge Motor Park. Good. So you are, you are in Roots, Lagos, and you are in the bus, and the beast and the started, anyone want me, anyone want me? You know where I start from? Nothing. Yes. Ah, before you know hand, you join. Ah. Do you understand? <laughs> before you know what's happening, you go full circle. You start, you start digging. You start vibing. That's exactly how Babylon converts. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the analogy. That's exactly how Babylon converts. It starts little. Oh no, I'm not part of them. I'll just be doing my thing. From doing your thing, you will start receiving gifts. Mm. They will steal money. Re Discipleship school alumni, remember the story of the commission I told you? 
my father's friend, uh -huh. you start receiving gifts. Ah, oh, I told you you are celebrating your 45th birthday. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, on behalf of the sons and daughters of the mass movement of the, uh, we just bought a brand new house for you in the younger Kujari. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. <laughs> we just brought a brand new house for you in Yoga Kujari. Hey, probably it is that money they looted from Mass Movement account that out of the proceeds that was deployed in buying you that gift. You can be a professing Christian and everything, and that is, that is the Nigeria we find ourselves today. You heard the story of the assistant pastor that stole pension funds and still pay tight. Pastor. Not even a floor Christian. Pastor, that is the Nigeria we have today. A lot of things have become normal. 10% kick back or kick forward. Standard. Over invoicing. Over inv as in standard practice. I was in the corporate world, so I can tell you. And who are the... <laughs> I remember I, was, I had to visit one of my uh, uh, mothers, mommies, you know. And she was complaining. She was just frowning. And that was not like, ah. She was just frowning. Ah, mommy, no shelly. What's ah? Mommy, ah, mommy, ah, mommy, ah, mommy, ah, mommy, ah, I calm down. Oh, my, you were around. And she was like, don't, don't look at my mother, boy, you know, daddy. And the, the guy was, she was talking about, I know the guy. He was a commissioner in the States. He was a fellowship brother. Let's go, when he was on campus. And a unionist. He said, of all the commissioners I'm working with in all these states, this guy is the worst. He's always asking, always demanding, always collecting. I still gave you fifty thousand dollars last week. Today he's asking for kidney, 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 kidney. And he's the only Christian. Even, and she now said a statement that hurt me. She said, even the Muslims among them, they are way better than they are way better than him. That's the experience. Except, except you don't deal in government. Except you don't do enterprise. You don't do business. Find professing Christians. They will preach fantastic messages as I'm preaching. Big time frosters. Crazy frauds. You know, I, I told you, it will get to a point, even in the boardroom, when you, when, when you introduce yourself and you call yourself, I'm pastor, everybody flags you. Pastor. Okay. Are you following me? Are you following me? That was exactly what was happening. Let's read forward. Nehemiah 5, we are now on verse 10. I myself, as my brothers and my workers, have been lending the people money and grain. Even brother Nehe and his brother, the chief reformist or chief reformer, if there's a title like that, was also neck deep in that business. It was a very thriving business model that they brought from Babylon. And now they're in the city of the Lord, that's what he still continued. He said what? But now let us stop this business of charging interest. You must restore their fields, vineyards, everything, restore. He even went for the verse 12. He said, they replied, we will give back everything and demand nothing from the people. We will do as you say. Then I called the priest and made the nobles and officials swear. He made them swear an oath that they would do as they have promised. This was the first national reform that Nehemiah executed on return back to Jerusalem. What do you do when you find yourself in a system that has professing Jews but practicing Babylonians? What do you do when you find yourself in an establishment that has professing Christians but practicing pagans? Will you stand for the faith or you will compromise? Will you take your stand in Christ or you will join them? And the process of joining them does not take too much. Ah, it happens very seamlessly. Before you know your soul is completely corrupted, you don't know yourself anymore. The kind of people the Lord needs in this end time are people that will dare the consequences. And Daniel proposed in his mind, I will not defy myself. I love the way the Yoruba Bible put it. He said, Oh, yeah, did do, oh, bah. Ah, that food must have been sweet. But some boy says, No, any food sacrificed to idol, I will not be part of it. Are you following? Always observe your team, whether they are living according to the code of righteousness. Anywhere, don't just take people on the surface of it. Oh, I'm a believer, and that is it. Look at them very well. Even you that you are talking, look at yourself. Are you living out your construct? And I shook out the fold of my robe and said, if you fail to keep your promise, may God shake you like this from your homes and from your properties. The whole assembly responded, amen. And the people did as they promised. But now, let us ask one question. How was Neymar? able to get these people to a point that he reprimanded them and they just agreed. One thing I've seen under heaven, ah, people will stop at nothing to truncate anybody that comes in line of anything that gives you profits. Did you hear that? People will stop at nothing, including killing you. 
You remember the story of a governor? I won't mention his name, but you all know that story. A governor who feels this government is run solely on political patronage. And even this, the, the companies, the consultants, the contractors that have been vested with the business of running the affairs of this state, they are not performing. Yet they are being paid. And they truncated that system. What did they not do to this guy? The last card was the ensure he did not return back to the office. So how was Nehemiah able to get an entire nation across the rank and file from the noble all the way downwards to stop something that was benefiting them? Now let's move to Nehemiah verse 5. I'm now 14 to 19. For the entire 12 years that I was governor of Judah, follow this story. From the 20th year to the 32nd year, that's 12 years that I acted in the capacity of the governor of Judah. I neither, neither I nor my officials drew on our official allowance. Did you hear that? Are you guys following at all? Neither I nor my officials drew on our what? Official food allowance. The former governors, in contrast, the previous governors, had laid heavy burdens on the people, demanding a daily ration of food and wine, besides their standard 40 pieces of silver tax. Even the assistants took advantage of the people. But because I feared God, I did not act in that. Are you following? That you are entitled to a privilege does not mean you have the moral standard moral standing rather, to take it. That you are entitled to a privilege does not give you the moral standing to take it. What exactly am I saying? I know a lot of you, know, a lot of you have not led this on certain capacity. So this message, it's like 10 years time, that's, why, that's when it will make sense to you. Yeah. Now look at it this way. Let me, let me give you some analogy. Okay, yes. Let me use myself as an example. As the head of Mass Movement Global, founder, president, G.O., Lead apostle, give me title. Senior, senior special. Good. Archbishop Bishop Ah, Bishop Let him worry. Seth, ma. We have plenty names these days. I love the body of Christ. Eh? Guy, take your. Eh, she dead, 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 dead. Eh? Eh? Emperor, Emperor Bau. Senior, most senior evangelist. <laughs> we are not in white garments. <laughs> there are some privileges that by standard I'm entitled to. By standard I'm entitled. I'm choosing my words very carefully. For which I've not afforded myself such luxury. Why? Why did Nehemiah as governor? He has an extra code called food allowance that is supposed to draw from the people. Is right, a tiny. He has what he calls 40 pieces of silver, standard taxation that he must pay to his office as governor. But he refused to take it. Why did he not refuse to take it? Madam, are you, are you for me or you are against me? Are you working with me or you are in another government? He said, I also devoted myself to working on the wall and I refused to acquire any land. Which governor were they talking about? Is he a governor, a prime, or, or one of our uh, Southwest premiers who built most of these estates? I think it was Latif Jaconde, and did not have one land. I mean, people like uh, Baba Adepunle Ajashi, who was governor of Ondo State, and the house he built as a principal of a secondary school was the same house he lived and died in. You say, ah, <laughs> a governor of this age. <laughs> you, you, know, <laughs> you know why they'll keep putting, pulling down your parents' shanties to create new GREs? Because when they're leaving office, they need to appropriate land to themselves, to their concubines, their side chicks, their girlfriends, their children. So they look for one area of the Okay, all these more people, I go demolish this place and create a new GRE. But this is one man who supervised the national construction. Yes! You don't forget they were resettling back from Jerusalem. So they were still apportioning plus. Okay, children of Isaac, this is where you will stay. Children of Zebulon, this is your quarters. The same man did not take one land for himself. And I required all my servants to spend time. He was also actively working. I asked for nothing, even though 
I regularly fed 150 Jewish officials at my stable beside the visitors from motherland. Visitors to an office are supposed to be taken care from the boss of the office. But even though, even though this guy did not draw any official food allowance. Why? Move. The provi See what this guy spends feeding. The provisions I, I paid for each day included one ox, six choice sheep or goats, and a large number of poultry. And every 10 days, we needed a large supplier of all kinds of wine. Food allowance, entertainment allowance. I'm sure you saw, you've been seeing what, was, what is going on on Twitter. Five billion, six billion. What are they eating? Designer rice? <laughs> eh? What are they eating? What are they drinking? He said, yes, I refuse to claim the governor's food allowance. Why? Because the people already carried a heavy... The people already carried a heavy what? That you are entitled does not mean the moral standard of, of that organization requires you to take it. As long as the system does not have the wherewithal to cater for the continuous supply of that allowance, then it becomes immoral for you to take it. But at that point, taking that allowance, even though you are dealt with by law, becomes a sin unto you. I'm, I'm going to give you an, an, an experience. 2016, I was CEO of a very major media conglomerate. Very massive. But it was a new company, it was a startup. I had a board who funded this very lofty and very fantastic vision in, I mean, running to billions. And we just kicked off. And my salary as CEO, I think the person that earned next to me, my salary will be about maybe times seven or times eight of that person's salary. The next person in the pay rank to me as CEO. And when we first started at that business, I saw that if I continue to take my salary, we are going to have a problem. Because most times, the little business we run, you know, every business has a gestation period before you now break even, right? Within that period of startup, if I took my salary, it was always a struggle to have running capital, to even run the office, to keep the diesel running in the generators, to keep fuel in the operational vehicles and the trucks and all of that. What did I do? I stopped taking that salary. Because that portion of my salary was like the buffer that was needed to start up the next month. Listen to this story. Am I entitled to it? Yes. I'm MD CEO. As a matter of fact, it was even my vision that was funded. Do I work? Ah, I work more than everybody. I remember then when the first activation we did in Abuja, oh, Paris Ground, Sinach, about 340 tonner trucks were driving behind me. I was driving in front. I led them to Abuja on road. The same way to so Wiri. Everywhere I was, I, <laughs> I know these roads like the back of my head. In the dead of the night, we leave Lagos 2 a.m., driving to Enugu, driving to Oweri. So do I work? I work more than everybody else. But from the point I noticed that we are not making as much that will warrant me to be taking this salary. Because if I draw this salary, there will not be running costs. And there will likely not be even money. Are you following me? To pay the salaries of my other staff. I stopped taking that salary. Guess what? When I and the board fell out, that was my only lifeline. That was my only lifeline. I was audited three good times. And guess what? Every time the auditors come to check the books, and they check, 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 check. check. Once they get to the point, ah, you have not been any salary? I say yes. It's not sustainable for now. I would rather defy it later. That's where the audit stops. They just, they're like, ah, do you understand? You send somebody to audit somebody to find infraction so that we can use to arrest him. Or to, do you understand? The same person, you are auditing, you are seeing in the records that the guy is not even drawing salary and he's still working and resuming every day. That's, most, that's where the audit stops. In fact, one of the, one of the, one of the, you know, just auditors can be very crazy. Can be very, any accountant here? Okay, you are an auditor. There is always this shoulder part they come with like, policeman, we are sent to catch you. <laughs> you know? So there was this very crazy one. It's like, it was the third one that was sent. Like, it's like they've given the guy a mandate, very elderly man, that you must find something against this guy. So the guy just started, it was so, what, what's the word now? What's, what's the word? There's a, there's, there's a word that's keeping me right now. It was so petty. So 
Things that by administrative protocol at my level, you can wave. Do you understand? I can do some approvals without. At my level, it will bring it up. Ah, why did you approve this? Why did this one not go through board approval? He listed all, do you understand? all kinds that he was waiting for me. Okay, you have to come and explain to me. When he got to auditing salaries and emoluments, <laughs> and he saw that the person he wanted to fry was not even taking salary. Ah, he caught that. <laughs> He became my friend. He called me. Like, what happened? Why not? And I, and I explained. We are not at that level yet. We are not buoyant yet. I'm hoping that maybe by third year, when we are broken even, we have steady clientele, I'll now be able to. That was where that would be stopped. The credibility you draw from delaying gratification can save you in the days of trouble. I take it again. The credibility you draw by delaying gratification can save you. It will save you in the days of trouble. That was my only saving grace because if those guys could find one thing, even if it's not material, something that I could have afforded in my pocket, they would have roasted me. Delaying gratification buys you credibility. There is a, there is a popular candidate that you all love. I'm sure maybe 70% maybe of those of you in this room voted for him. <laughs> the way that guy is so hated, <laughs> If that guy did not live above board in all the offices he occupied, if they found one thing, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. If they found one thing, just one thing, against that guy, ah, they would have roasted him. The link gratifications helps you to buy credibility and not just credibility long-term credibility see young people listen to me i understand that a lot of you are coming from very poverty stricken backgrounds and most times when god just raised you ha we started from the trenches now we are here you see that in a single day just your office you can just take 150k for entertainment whether you have guests or you do not have guests i'm sure you will draw that money just because why? It is already apportioned to your office. Not every entitlement is your entitlement. Are you learning something this morning? Are you learning something this morning? He said, I asked for nothing. I gave people land. Even me, I did not take any. So how do you reform a system? Create, create, how do you reform a system rather? Create a system for feedback. Don't be a leader that just sits on the top. And assumes everybody's okay, like a former president we once had, who we call his ADC. Are we in power? So God, we are still in power. Okay. He does not read newspaper. They only give him, <laughs> they made him watch NTA. He does not watch any other television station. They give him newspaper courts that he must read. Unlike, <laughs> unlike President OBJ. Before you bring your press cuttings, the guy has sent somebody out to go and buy a newspaper. He already knows the feeling of the nation, what the nation is saying about him. You know, offices are always surrounded with psycho fans. Okay, are we really doing well? Are people feeling us? Oh God, they are feeling us. Is our government impacted? Ah, no other government has been this good in the history of this country. People around you, they will feel you nonsense because of what they are chopping from you. Always create a system for feedback. The top is not lonely. You made it lonely because you have no system for feedback. So that guy just gave you cruise. The top is never lonely. Mm. The top is lonely because you isolated yourself from reality. How did Neymar know what was happening? People were complaining. People were grumbling. He heard. He heard. He would have been there and that entire nature will collapse over him. Before you know what happened. Another hand starts to start in, in Jerusalem. People start doing what? When you get to offices, always connect downwards. Don't sit in your highly exalted offices. I speak to you. No, I don't, I'm not speaking to your present. I'm, I'm speaking to your future. I speak to you as leaders that God will position strategically everywhere. So when I come on your status at night, and some of you will scream at me, hey, I got, I got my status. I only came to see your likely tendencies, your dispositions. Because when we have mass make God, everybody comes in only. Let's come and pray. Ah, they are the most righteous of all. But let's go on their status. From your post, we will know your mind. Out of the abundance of the heart, the hand type it. 
Uh, there was no WhatsApp when the Bible was written. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the hand tweeted. It is what we have within you. What is the likely disposition of all these people? What are their tendencies? That is how I got to know people in worship as of that can worship very powerfully, but they still go to club. Yeah. Uh, that, that's where I saw all of them. As I said, hello, sister. Kilua, <laughs> Kilua. <laughs> don't sit on top and think everybody is okay How much people, you guys can pray I just love your worship <sighs> on the assumption that everybody's okay not all of us have sense yeah. and I know yes not everybody has sense I know that I give that provision I give that allowance for my leadership that is why sometimes I just start some random people hey, okay starting me today he? I'm protecting the integrity of the system because when the system goes down, we all go down, including me, that you don't know what's happening. So if you, are, if you say the top is lonely and you just, you just isolate yourself up there, till that system will crumble on you, you still think you're in charge. You think you're in control. Don't be that leader that is just high up there. You don't know what your junior staffs are doing. <laughs> eh? You don't know what your junior staffs are doing. Ah, you are senior manager, AGM, executive director, this, that, that. <laughs> Drivers are already... <laughs> I remember a situation just came to mind. Drivers are already grumbling. Don't be like one, one of my man, management staff. Let me just quote it like that. One of my management staff that they got on Tomelan Bridge one, one afternoon. And the guy just turned the car, faced the bridge. Ah, what are you doing, young man? He said, Madam Shebi, you have been harassing me all these days. I've been asking for 950 allowance. I've been asking, you have withheld my money. We will die together, right? Ah, <laughs> ah please don't. <laughs> Holy Spirit, thank you. I just remember right now. Always check your system. Always create a system of audits for your system. In the past, that is how I know leaders who are misbehaving. That is how I got to know guys who was, who was toasting every girl. Everybody is scared. They had to call him, Oga, what is exactly your spec? Because in the, in the list I've compiled against you, I've seen thin and short, short and stocky, fat and pompous. What exactly are you looking for? Is somebody learning this afternoon? Yes, sir. Is somebody learning this afternoon? Yes, sir. God will establish over a system, but always create that system of feedback. Never sit aloof on top and think everything is just cool, everything is doing well. And where, what was I saying before now? There is immense power in delayed gratification. Immense power. That you are entitled to the privileges of an office does not mean you must take that privilege immediately. It can be deferred. And what is the morality behind it? If the system cannot sustainably, keyword, sustainably, if the system cannot sustainably provide for it, you are not entitled to take it, even if it is apportioned to you. It's the same thing also in ministry. Because these are the kind of anomalies we find in our system. And if you are to lead according to the order of Christ, as I taught you when I teach uh, uh, doctrines, when I'm introducing doctrines, where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, a leader is never greater than his servants. As a matter of fact, the table should be turned. Leaders are meant to serve the servants. So if you understand leadership from that standpoint, why would you inconvenience people for your own luxury when they cannot even afford it? This is what has become the bane of the nation we have called Nigeria. That is why we have a government that does not work. You see all the news we've been hearing from the inception of this administration? You are saying sacrifice. You remove all my buffer, remove subsidy. That's direct buffer. That has direct impact on the people. You floated dollar. Ah, everything I do in my life is dollar predicated. Those are things that impact me directly. But you same guys that already has retinue of cars parked in different houses, in different cities, different states. You still think you need a seven billion to buy a car for your office. I'm talking to people within government. Yes, are they entitled to it? Yes, they are entitled to it. You see what the senators are doing? How much did they use to buy cars? One, 150 something billion? 160 billion? Don't they have cars? Not just cars. Don't they have cars before now? Are they entitled to the cars? Yes, by the constitution. But the morality of the nation, the present pulse of the nation does not warrant such kind of frivolous expenses. They are still traveling about with plenty of heads. One person traveling, 40, 50 people following. To do what exactly? 
Are they entitled? Yes. But there is a certain morality. That is what Nehemiah exemplifies. Am I talking to leaders here? Yes. I'm very passionate about this subject I'm teaching right now. Because if we get leadership wrong, everything is wrong. Everything is wrong. So things do not have to be outrightly criminal for it to be a sin. Yeah. Whether the Bible states it or not, when you negate this code I'm teaching you, it becomes a sin unto you. When you take a privilege that becomes an inconvenience to the people you lead, it becomes a sin unto you. But according to this mindset, once it is morally wrong, it is wrong. And it is the secret of very key leaders in getting the buy-in of their subjects. Smart leaders know this. Because for every sacrifice you take, the people know. The people what? They know. Okay, let me, let me make myself as an example. Uh, how many of you have been to my house in Lagos? If I, if I has been there, Anna, a couple of you, Mrs. Ola, good. Some of you have not entered my bedroom, but he is here. He has entered my bedroom. He knows how massive my bedroom is, how luxurious it is. But of course, you know my shack here, my hostel here, healthy up. How did we sleep this morning? Where are they? How did we sleep? Where are they? We all slept on the floor. Do you understand? We all slept on the floor. The first instinct to me yesterday was, ah, I'm going to sit today. I, I need to be in a relaxed mind. I wanted to call you a hotel. Guys, lock something. Oh, Bible guests, I always have like permanent rooms there. Lock somewhere for me. Let me. But I looked at the pulse of the ministry. In view that we have some other things, we still have a Lagos meeting. We rent that venue for about 200K. Every single time we meet there. We still have so many other expenses. Whoa, well, let me leave this 25,000 one night. She needs to sleep and wake up. Oh yeah, bring my mattress and my mats. And, he, and they, all of us, the ladies enter one room. And I mean, Dolako is always around. That's how. But what does that tell you? The, in the days of my honor, you'll be there to tell people. <laughs> Do you understand? You'll be there to tell them, ah, we were there. When Toluti came to Ibadan, when he would not have money for hotel, and you go and park in front of Chapel of Resurrection and sleep inside his car. And he'll still come and preach a fantastic message the following morning. I will still do the other overnight, and I'll still drive back to Lagos. They saw it. The late gratification buys credibility for you. That is why, you know, when, when I meet pastors, when I come to community of pastors, they ask me, what is, guy, okay, I know you sing, we know, everybody sing. What exactly is your influence? Because if you are a star, like star, yes, I'm known, I'm a, I'm a sort of celeb, hello, yeah. I don't carry it, but I know. Do you understand? But if it's like a celeb, we'll say, okay, it's because it's a celeb. What exactly is the secret of your, influ of your influence? Delayed gratification it is. My sacrifice is seen by all. It's seen by all across many years. People can tell you the story. When, when this mass movement started, this, but I came to you, but on bike, dusty, that's the Jabodi Ekpe Road. It was not made in, very full of dust. And I had no place to stay. They knew. Do I did not announce. I can talk about it right now because things are way better now. So it has not always been like this. So some of you that came, ah, mass movement, eh? I love that crusade, always massive. <laughs> Hello. I, I always told you, those here who go and do crusades, who come back home, no food in the house, me and my wife and two children. And we just finished spending 12 million, 15 million. And I'll still spend like one year paying back. People know. So the secret to influence, especially across the rank, top down rank, is very, delayed gratification is very powerful. Because people see your sacrifices. People know your sacrifices. Are you following me? So when I say I move here, people are ready to move with you. Why? They've seen through your heart. It is beyond what I'm preaching. One of the key problems you have in the body of Christ, people are talking what they are not doing. Yeah. Preaching what they are not acting out. You are teaching me humility from the construct of how you run the office, carry the office. I don't see anything called humility. I don't see anything. Apostle Paul said, I've learned to do what? Abase and abound. I'm not seeing any. All you want is abound. All I'm seeing is abounding. Are you following me? Yes, don't be too fast to appropriate privileges to yourself. Don't be too fast. Even if you're entitled to it, don't be too fast to draw resources to yourself. I know you are coming. In fact, one of the biggest deliverances you must ever go to is to rid yourself of the poverty and scarcity mentality. If you take that into governance and power, see, you will be speaking in tongues and misbehaving. Your level of misbehavior will be pari pasu. It will be in tandem. It will be at par with your energy of speaking in tongues. That is why we have a lot of people who are misbehaving in the corridors of power and influence. But yet, they are very loud preachers. The Bible is supposed to do what? Reform us. That's why I'm saying this all over again. 
Is somebody getting blessed this afternoon? I was telling them in Lautech, when we went to Lautech, where did we sleep? I was the only one that had the privilege of sleeping in a room because we could not even afford it. The fuel to, okay, Dolak was in the car with me now. The fuel for us to go that day was how much? We spent almost 140,000 to fuel our cars to go to Obomosho. Yeah. By the time we got to Obomosho, no money, and we had spent almost 2 million already. He slept in the car. <laughs> uh, uh, where did you even sleep? I don't know. He just escaped somewhere. Do you understand? When it's time for people to sacrifice, they will sacrifice because they can see your sacrifice. You are telling people to sacrifice, but you, all, all we are seeing around you is, is, uh, is a, it becomes a scam. Like, uh, uh, I'm not a new brain, uh, I'm a uh, do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Because they know for the gospel, I will go to any length. We have gone for administration and returned back the same night because there was no place to stay. And one name, we will get, if I is here now, you follow me, and we get on the road one name, one name, we come back. At least I have a house here in Ibadan. We come and sleep inside that one. Once we get to Ibadan, we are fine. We get to the world and buy one. There's one useless rice that they sell. That woman comes out, she's like an evil spirit. She comes out like 1.30 a.m. in the morning. Ah, you guys don't know, in your same Ibadan, yeah? Yes, sir. Ah, you, you, you don't know your city as I do. She comes out like 1.30 a.m. You know that, that guy fried one. You will see everything. Moin, moin, do, do. One, around 1 a.m., 1.30, that's when she comes out. Yes. All those construction workers making the Badefe Road, that's where they come back to eat. You see World Road, busy like a party. So I know your city by sacrifice. I don't know all the joints. You feel attacked. <laughs> that was the secret to Neymar's correction being taken in good faith. So when it's time to enforce discipline, people will listen because they know your consecration, they know your sacrifice. They know you are walking your talk. The problem is somebody that is misbehaving wants to discipline another person that is misbehaving. Who will listen? You see how chaos is introduced into a nation. This is, this is a nation building class. You see how chaos is introduced into a nation. Things as simple as this. Things as simple as this. That was the secret. He did not only reprimand them, he even committed them to an oath. He made them swear. And these people still agreed. Ah, uh -uh. they rated him. They rated him. Uh. They really rated him. When leaders are in their position, you don't need to draw servitude from people. People naturally will sacrifice for that office. That's why we sit in my house and I will see people send seed. And I, uh, and I will call them. Ah, uh. but you were telling me some months, but you are not okay in school and all of that. I, said, I just, I see, uh, I, I mean, and those things touch me. Genuinely, sometimes I feel like weeping. I just saw the movement and I'm like, ah, if I can't follow you, at least let my seed follow you. From a student, I feel like crying. Why? They saw something. They saw something. Without soliciting, without calling, without... They saw something. Are you getting blessed this afternoon? It's still the Bible we are teaching. Let's move forward. Nehemiah 6 now, that's where we are. Oh my God. Hey, this is a very long teaching. But are you guys ready? You are not ready. You are ready? Yes, Nehemiah 6. I love to tell stories so that, you know, like that, my brother. He didn't remember the story, but the cruise. They remember the story. You won't remember the scripture, but you remember the story. Sambalat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Harab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I, I had finished rebuilding the wall and that no gaps remained, though we had not yet set up the doors in the gates. So Sambalat and Geshem sent a message asking me to meet them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But I realized they were plotting to harm me. So I replied by sending this message to them. I'm engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet you? When you see anybody that is everywhere, he has no work. <laughs> eh? When you see anybody that is everywhere, he has no work. That's the fastest way to identify an NFA. You know what they call an NFA? No future. God bless you. They are everywhere. This is happening. We are there. That is happening. Ah, they belong to everybody. They belong to nobody. Like President Buhari said at the inception of his, of his administration. They are everywhere. They are not committed anywhere. I'm doing a great work. I can't come. Why will you be sending for me? Why should I? I mean, why should I answer you? You know. The, um, Holy Spirit, help me. So many things to say. Very sensitive, but we say. This is family. You know, there's a time, especially in ministry or even enterprise, when glory comes. 
One season that God just beams spotlight on you and everybody comes after you. They want you to be in this program. It happened to me exactly after that massive stadium, my seven. It was a flagship meeting. Ah, and he was like, yes, this is the season. Ah, this is the time to consolidate all the years of labor, all the years of service. This is the time to let the world know there is a guy here called Evangelist Oluji. And the invite started coming. Invite. And the Holy Spirit said, do not step out. Ah, do not step out. How? He now even became worse. COVID-19 came. But as COVID-19 came, invite, online invite, virtual meeting, virtual, come and teach us, come and tell us, come and, ah. And the Holy Spirit said, face your team. That was where we held the first discipleship school. It was done in COVID-19. He said, face your team. But Father, if this visibility is not there, cash will not come. Do you understand? It's when the visibility is present. That's when, you know, the pay grade will be increasing. Do you understand? And he said, sit where I've placed you. It was, I won't lie to you, it was tough. It was really, ah, it was tough. He said, no. He said, this is just a shadow of what is coming. This is not it. Uh, just, he said, stay. He said, this is just a shadow. This is, he said, when it starts, it won't even be on this level. It won't, be, it won't be local. It won't be national. He said, just stay. That was when I started doing book review. We reviewed the uh, RG Lotonu. You know, LT, I mean, you guys were there. I mean, we were just, just team building, as in building capacity. You can't be everywhere. And you know, when I was struggling, I was praying, and the Holy Spirit said, okay, hold it, let me break it down for you. He said, all these people invited you, number one, how many of them, how many of them even know one song you have sang? <laughs> and I said, oh, that's true. How many of them have even listened to one message you have preached? I said, that's true. So I did an experiment. Once an invite comes, okay, so what do you want? Have you gone through all my messages? What do you want me to? Do you understand? They will never be able to point at something. The Holy Spirit now asked me, so what exactly are they following? They only follow your traction. They're not following you. <laughs> eh? They only follow your traction, only follow your noise. They're not exactly following you. So the ones that are following you, teach them. Build them. Point. Hey. Is still part of delayed gratification because you know the way we measure success in ministry especially in the africa until i started relating with ministers abroad in this african climate is how present you are everywhere how many billboards your face how many uh, flyers i can post per day that's why oh, oh, my god god is in the earthquake he's in the wind he's in the still small voice too god is everywhere i cannot come down four times they sent the message they don't stop and each time I gave them the same reply. The fifth time, Sambala's servants came with an open letter in his hand. And this is what he said. There is a rumor among the surrounding nations. And Geshem tells me it is true that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. And that is why you are building the wall. According to his report, you plan to be their king. Now, Mokri has graduated to lies. Refer back to engaging Babylon 2. Four stages of Mokri. Uh, a lot of you are looking because you didn't, you didn't listen. It has not graduated to what? He also reports that you have appointed prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim about you. Look, there's a king in Judah. You can be very sure that this report will get back to the king. So I suggest that you come and talk it over with me. It has now become intimidation and threats. You see graduation of evil. Babylonian evil. It keeps moving. Mockery, lying, intimidation, and threats. I replied, there is no truth in any part of your story. You are just making up this thing. They are just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they will discourage us and stop the work. So I continue the work with even greater. I continue the work with what? I told you at the last class, when they mock you, focus on the work. See, every level of Babylonian evil that might come your way, focus on the work. Whether it is intimidation, whether it is lying, focus. The work is the target, not you. Yeah. Uh -huh. The work is what? Is the target, not you. And if you are really busy, you cannot be found everywhere. If you are really busy. I mean, <laughs> some days I wake up and I'm like, Holy Spirit. So how are we going to fix today? Based on what is on the table. Even me, I know, man. How? That you literally pray that, Father, can you just extend 24 hours to about 36? Just for today, for your son. And he reply you, as long as the heart remains. See time and harvest time. Seasons and cycles will not change. <laughs> Later, I went to visit Shemaiah, son of Delilah, and grandson of Mehetabel, who was confined to his home. He said, 
Now, it gets interesting from here. That's a prophet. He went to visit the prophet, one of the prophets in the land. He said, let us meet together inside the temple of God. In brackets, holy of holies. If you have a, if, if you have a King James, bring it out. Read, read that place for me. I want to establish a fact to let you know that hmm, when Babylon wants to come for you, when evil wants to come for you, it will not stop at nothing. Okay, maybe you guys should do an head count and let's see if you can get drinks. The Lord God will provide. Let's see if you can get cold drinks for everybody, yeah. If you are feeling sleepy, you are free to stand up and go and stay at the back. But listen, you must. Who has King James there? Afterwards, I came to the house of Shemel, the, the son of Delilah, the son of... Who was shut up and who, he said, and he said let, us meet together in the house of God. let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Within, the temple. Let us meet together in the house of God. within... Let me show you in imagery. But so he said, and both the doors shut. Your enemies are coming to kill you tonight. But I replied, should someone in my position run from danger? Should someone in my position enter the temple to save his life? I said, no. I said, no, I won't. <laughs> Listen. Eh? Ah, you say, ha, ah, you are getting it. Hold on. You have not gotten it. If you are the one that always craves attention to prove a point, ah, your hand will be prompt. Somebody that has suffered mockery, let's break that evil down, the graduation. Lies, intimidation, threat. The natural disposition of that man is to what? Seek validation in people. Ah, people that will hear my case. So that at least, if the trouble starts tomorrow, and we have one, two, three, four, five people, are you following me? They'll be able to say, no, no, no. Even if they take, don't make bed door loss anywhere. I'm sure you heard that stuff before. Thomas be a joy in us anywhere. At least I'm sure I will have five people that will stand up and say, no, no, no. Brother Nehe is not like this. Brother Nehe's intention. So, you know what? He will be disposed to be seeking alliances. Am I talking to people here? He will be disposed to be seeking what? Alliances. Try. You cannot explain to everybody. Let your result do the explanation. Am I talking to you? You cannot what? Explain to everybody. Let your eventual result do the explanation. It is still that scarcity mindset, that poverty mindset that wants to make you prove that, ah, no, 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 we are here. We are already here. We are doing well now. Yes, we were like that. No. When you are doing well, the whole world knows you are doing well. How many people can you possibly explain to? If you are the type that craves result to prove a point, your hand also will be very prompt. Yeah. Yeah. No, I won't do it. Should somebody of my caliber run from danger? He said what? Because I realized that God had not spoken to him. I realized that God had not what? But that he had uttered this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambalat hired him. Hey, man of God said, not every man of God hears from God. Not every man of God hears from God. I love to say the prophetic ministry is, very, is a very thin line of being subject to adulteration. That is why you must know your God yourself, study your Bible yourself. Anything a prophet tells me must be a validation of what the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. Just yesterday, two, yesterday overnight, yesterday I got a call from a father in the land who I saw earlier last week. He said he was praying and he just saw some things about me. He said, come, come, let's have a discussion. I'm flying to Abuja, but we need to have this conversation. I will delay a bit for you. So yesterday morning, in fact, that's why I came in earlier to you. So yesterday morning, I quickly went, to his, went to, his, uh, to his office. And guess what? Everything he was telling me was, I've been doing a prayer drill for about, about a month. It started from you in UK, in June. But in a month now, about three, sometimes six hours every day. Drill. You see here? Ah. Uh, you think it's just by fine jacket I come and do man of God? <laughs> eh? They play. Real play. Real play. And there were documentations that Holy Spirit was giving me about the mass movement, things to do, next steps. If I so interesting, this is one of the years that the theme of next year was given to me early. Very last year was given to me December on Lekki Koi Bridge. If you followed me very closely, this one. I got the theme of next day in June. 
there's a, there's a park where I usually pray. For the two months as you can, every day I do like six hours in that park. I won't tell you yet. Ah, 2024, I'm waiting. If Jesus studies, hold on, Allah. God. Ah, you know, and when we started, when he started sharing with me yesterday, everything he was saying was direct alignment. Do you understand? Direct alignment. In fact, it was like he saw my shadow. It was like he saw my, because I maintain what I call a prophetic journal. It was like he saw my prophetic journal. Not every man of God hears from God. So it's not by status. Sometimes they are also in error. Hmm? So a genuine prophet can hear wrong. It does not mean he's not a prophet or he has stopped to function in prophetic office. A genuine prophet can hear wrong. Yeah. So the balance is you know your God yourself. Know your seasons. Know what the Holy Spirit is telling you. But time, that is always the balance. If you don't, ha! One fear jail. It's valid in this year, brother. Ha 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 it was like he saw, at the time I was shivering, I was, I was, it was like he saw my shadow. So this is what you do. The way, so he first went, I just said, okay, so Tolu, tell me, where is the mass movement right now? And I started explaining, 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 explaining. He just paused me and, boah, he just started saying. He was, the journal was in my hand, the radar, my popular radar, he was in my hand. He was like, he opened it and saw it. That's like, ah, this man is, ah, walking with the Holy Spirit. Some plans are itemized for two years' time, programs for next year, some reformation, some ah, ah some real ah, ah. It was so. But hey, there are some other prophets that prophesy for pay. You remember that woman during the election that said, <laughs> God wants Peter B to win. But the way it's going, it looks like Atiku. But it's Tinubu they will give. You didn't see that prophecy? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what does that tell you? They have prayed for everybody. Everybody is their client. <laughs> I once went to the house of a man of God around 1 a.m. in the night. As I was coming in, one candidate was driving out. Ah. When I got in, the second candidate came to visit him. When I was leaving, he was also about driving. It was about 2.30 in the morning. He was also about driving out. And I was ah. He went to Lolo Rui. Ah. He said, I want to go and meet the third candidate in Ilefe that night. For another prayer, <laughs> prophet, you are doing well, man of God. <laughs> you are doing well. <laughs> you are better walk with the Holy Spirit in this age. You are better let the spirit of your discernment be <laughs> optimum to pick which spirit is communicating per time, not just to base the validity of what is being spoken by the personality of who is speaking. They were hoping to intimidate me and make me sin. Then they will, they will be able to accuse and discredit me. The last card of Babylon is always set up. See, you can miss all those hellier evils. You can miss mockery. You can escape lies. You can escape intimidation and threats. I miss this part. All the evils at first, you can just focus away from it. But this one, it takes discernment. Because when somebody tells you your life is threatened, the first natural instinct of man is self preservation. Am I talking to people? The first natural instinct is to what? Bear love to safety. So all the, all the decorum you had from the beginning of this, of the graduation or the gravitation of this evil, you can lose it right here. See, you can pass all the previous tests and fail this one. You can pass all the previous tests of Babylon and fail this one. The last kind of Babylon is what? Set up. Pressurize one to commit atrocity to preserve yourself. Put you under pressure to commit sin to preserve yourself. That's exactly what they were. And I will break it down for you in imagery. You will see. You don't still get it now. Only the Spirit of God operating by an extreme sense of discernment that can make you escape these parts. If not, it will knock you off. He said what? Should someone in my position run from danger, it takes an if I perish or I perish postal to escape this thing. So you, some of you must wake up from this room and take more radical disposition, radical commitment to following the Lord. Not only when it is convenient. Let me break it down for you. Now, roll all the imagery after this. Roll the image after this. Now, the prophet told him, ah, let us run into the temple, the house of God, and shut the door behind ourselves. Nobody will. This is the only safe zone that you have, Abi. Hold on. Now, that is a prototype model. 
Sorry, one minute. That's a prototype model of what the temple looks like. Okay? Every settlement of Israel is always around that temple. Flip, flip the image. Flip the, I want to run fast on this. You see them? They settle in... See, there is no nation that is so restricted as the nation of Israel. Everything, everything about their life is regimented. God handed... The way they even settled around the tabernacle was given, and I will show you. Do you understand? So, the natural instinct, if Nehemiah was to be killed, was first thing. What tribe is Nehemiah from? Once they know the tribe is from, they'll know, okay, ah, this tribe is always to the east. They're always to the east of the tabernacle, so let's go and ransack all the houses in the east. That's where we'll kill him, right? The only safe zone, am I talking to people? The only safe zone where it will never cross their mind is inside the temple. Not just inside the temple, the house of God. Follow me. See the breakdown. Now, this is inside the temple. This is the altar of burnt offering. Okay? This is, this, this is what called call the inner court. Everywhere outside, when I teach, I would do a special teaching on worship. I use the temple as a prototype model. So you understand what we do when we worship, and you understand that <laughs> most of the things we call worship, we they play at the core. Now, this place is called the most holy place. Hmm? The most holy place. Now, inside the most holy place, that's the menorah, the several candles stand. That should not go dead at any point. The candles must never. This is the temple of the unliving bread where the communion is always present. Are you following me? There is an altar of incense somewhere to this. Now, this is where it's called the house of God, the holy of holies, where the ark of the covenant sits, where the Shekinah glory of God is always present. That even the prophet is only permitted to enter it once in an entire year. This is where this prophet is advising the governor, let's go and hide inside the most holy place. Logically, rationally, it makes sense. Because that is where we naturally will not come into the hearts of your assailants. They will never think you will hide inside the most holy place. Do you understand? So that an idea makes sense. Eh? That an idea makes sense does not make it right logically, rationally makes sense, still does not make it right. What makes things right? It is, is it in alliance with the scriptures? That's what makes it right. The alignment of that action with the position of the Bible is what makes it right or wrong. That it sounds right does not mean it's right. That it feels right does not mean it's right. We live in a world right now that feelings have become very amplified. If it feels good, then it's good. No. It can feel good and it's not good. Sex feels good. Ah, it feels very good. But if it is appropriated, if it is practiced against the order that the scripture proposes, then it will feel good. You'll be feeling good and you'll find yourself in there. When Jesus died on the cross and he said, it is finished, this was the veil. This was the veil that ripped into two. Open access, everybody. I'll be before now, only the priests had access. But now, everybody, anybody that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a privilege. So what you are seeing right there as a prototype, I carry now on my inside. Ha! Ah, I don't want to talk up that to start teaching on worship, but let's move forward. Let's move forward. But you get the idea, yeah? You get the idea? Okay, you see? Ark of Covenant, that's the breakdown. Handed design by God himself. Handed down the design. The altar, burnt offerings, and, and what? Ark of the Covenant. Another picture. I brought a lot of pictures from different, um, uh, different uh, what's it called now? Historical books. You see that? See the inside? That's the veil. You see the settlements? You see the settlements? Very methodical, very regimented, very controlled people. And that is exactly how God expects us to live. So where did this communication enter the body of Christ? that proposes that you can be a Christian and just do life as you like. When even his own children, he did not permit them to live. They can't even eat what they want. Their food was handed, was given. So you understand the standpoint when Daniel said he will not defy. He saw Nebuchadnezzar's food as contamination. But it was good food, yeah? <laughs> move forward. Dolako, move forward. 
Can you see the breakdown? Still move forward. Now, Hebrews 9, 7. But only the high priest ever entered the most holy place and only once a year. That's even the high priest. Not even a regular priest can, is permitted to enter that place. So how will it ever make sense for a Jew? Let's go and hide. What audacity. And he always offered blood for his own sins and for the sin of the people. Look at the protocol of entry for even that priest, oh, that once in a year. I won't be able to go through all because it's lengthy. But let me just take a little. Follow. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons, who died after they entered. Did you hear that? After they entered the Lord's presence and burned the wrong kind of fire, because they even burned the wrong kind, they died in that same room, hiding place. The Lord said to Moses, warn your brother Aaron not to enter the most holy place behind the inner curtain whenever he chooses. Even the high priest is not at liberty to wake up and say, ah, my worship today has to be in the most holy of all. In fact, I don't want, I don't want to stay in the outer court and have some special communication with the Lord God Most High. It has to be right in the most holy place. He does not have that luxury. This is the hiding spot. Perfect hiding spot. You see how stupid it sounds right now? But the day it was being proposed, it will sound stupid. The day this idea was being proposed, it will sound stupid. It will make sense. Like, I thought I knew of all the tents. This, this, the, nobody, will, no, it won't even enter the mind of anybody. This is the perfect place to hide. Do you get the picture? If he does so, he will die. For the axe cover the place of atonement is there. And I myself am pre present in the cloud. God himself is the God, hey, children of God, this God that you carry everywhere you go. See the protocol to enter back in the days. Oh. We carry this God that we are misbehaving. You know? See the protocol to enter where a physical place where he has chosen to meet his people. But we now carry him on the inside and say, ah, grace is okay. Let's continue to sing. Hmm. Ah. Now, see the protocol. When Aaron enters the sanctuary area, he must follow the instructions fully. If he follows partially, he's dead. If he follows above requirements, he's dead. He cannot be beyond, he can, there cannot be a shortfall. It has to be exact. This God, this God we are playing with, they play, really. This generation is playing. They say, oh, we are not under the law. But you forgot that the mindset of God is across the ages the same. He must bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He must put on his lining tunic, even the dress he must wear, the color of the dress he must wear, how he must tie it, where he must tie it, where he must position. Kilo day. I said, when I was reading this place, I got tired. I got tired of reading. It was, I was like, how can those priests, we need to give them thumbs up. Hey! How did they survive all of this? And I can just wake up my day and say, Daddy, my daddy, my daddy, your baby is singing. What is the deal? The same God. Ah, give God some respect, man. See the protocol to access the presence of this same God. Oh. This grace we are taking for granted. See, he must put on his lining tunic and the lining undergarments, one next to his body. He must tie the lining sash around his waist and put the lining turban on his head. These are sacred garments, so he must bath himself in water and put them on. Aaron must take from the community of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. Then he must take the two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of this tabernacle. He is to cast sacred lots to determine, to determine which goat will be reserved as his offering to the Lord, which will carry the sins of the people. Do you understand? Aaron will then present as a sin offering the goats chosen by the Lord for the Lord. The other goats, the scapegoat chosen by the Lord to be sent away, will be kept alive, standing before the Lord. When it is sent away to Azazel in the wilderness, the young people will be purified and made right with God. This same repentance, you can say, Father, ah, I misbehaved yesterday, I lied. Alone, my daddy give you by your blood, I'm sorry. And you are forgiven. See the process for atonement. For just himself. Ah, somebody should praise this God. Yeah? So anytime I have the privilege to worship, see, this thought alone in my mind, ha, ah, if I'm tired, I will scale up that worship. Ah, the fact that I can even wake up and I just begin to sing to you anywhere in this wilderness, 
In this Agitu, in my car, anywhere. I, I tell you, one of my best encounters and experiences is, is in flights. I just loved, I'll just be worshiping all through. Anywhere. See protocol. Oh yeah, are you following me? Where, where was I? Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself, making them right with the Lord. After he has slaughtered the bull as a sin offering, he will fill in an incense burner with the burning coals from the altar that stands before the Lord. Then he will take two handfuls of fragrant powdered incense and we carry the burner incense behind the inner curtain. As in, where I must go? Where I must stop? What he must take? Where I must take it from? Where, ah, kilo de. Eh? Move, 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 move. See? Let me stop. I'm even tired of reading. I'm already panting. So imagine somebody now following this protocol. This is where that young, that prophet said, let's go and hide. See the requirement to enter that presence. Can you see the stupidity of this, of that idea? The only thing that can save you at this level of Babylonian evil is the spirit of discernment. Because every proposition will make sense to you. Every proposition will make logical sense to you. That is why if you don't carry the Holy Spirit, ha, hey, how, how do we even begin to explain this? Just some two nights I was praying in front of our flat, I was telling some of these guys yesterday, I thought to even tell the inhabitants, and I was praying, my eyes just opened suddenly, I saw an image, it looked like a goat, but the goat was very raised, as high as almost a ram, with two golden eyes. Ah, the Holy Spirit, what was this? I've been praying here before, and they told me some familiar spirits around this environment. The prayer you've been praying for the past has been triggering some activity here. So they came to check you. The lords of this earth came after me and they found nothing. When they come after you, <laughs> will they find something? And I was like, and I started rebuking that spirit. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. What audacity. Where I'm standing. You even have the ah. Uh ah. -uh. Uh -uh. <clears throat> and everybody was asleep. This was about 1 45 a.m. in the morning. Everybody was sound asleep. Having a good night. Ah. The kind of war God fights for us when we sleep. <laughs> that we just sleep and wake up. Uh, you have no idea. Only one day. Let Holy Spirit open your eyes. Just one night. And see the cross network of terrestrial and area evil that surrounds you. Ah, <laughs> Kalas Hey, somebody must carry the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Your discernment must be what? Must discern, your discernment must be sharp and optimum. Are you following me? The only thing that saved Nehemiah there was because he had a perfect understanding of the scriptures. He knew what the Lord said about the operations, the access of the temple. And he will not do anything. That's why I could say, should somebody like me run from evil and commit sin, then if it takes me to die, let me die. Ah, somebody needs to have that kind of posture. The scripture provides the perfect template, perfect guide for our decision making. And I've always said this. The scripture is what? It's the perfect template. It's the perfect guide for every form of decision making. If not, life will make good and attractive propositions for you. Ah, sleep with that boss. Now, it's only once now. Ah, do you know that man? His uncle is the head of a Chairman Petroleum Equalization Fund. He can lock you in. If he locks you in Abuja once, you are made forever. And it makes sense. After all, it's not like I'm a virgin now. So, I just do it once. I've done it before. Do you understand? Maybe it was just the blood of Jesus that just redeemed me. Okay, let me just do it once and just... <laughs> it might be just that last time that you do. The world will always give you propositions at every time. Ah, you need to access something. Just go and... You need to go and lock that guy with something. No? If you don't lock that guy with something, your monotony will come out of you though. And you know these things have become so normalized in Nigeria today. It has become so normalized. We don't... It doesn't even prick us anymore. Like, do you understand? It does not prick us anymore. Babylon at work. The spirit of Babylon at work. But your generation must live differently. Your generation must act differently. The evolving generation must live different from what we are seeing right now. If this nation must be changed. Are you here with me, people of God? Let's close out on this name ah, and take the next, uh, take the next icon. Dolapa, are you there? There is still a chart. We have not shown them. There is still a chart. It's a class. Yeah. Can you see the distribution? According to the word of the Lord, this is how they must settle. This is how the nation of Israel, everywhere, in every city must look like. Strict regimentation. That's just by the way. 
Now let's move forward. Be very careful of the voices that speaks to you. Hmm? Let me emphasize it again. Be very, very careful of the voices that speaks to you. Every voice is not the voice of God. How do we know? We must balance everything that is said with the scriptures. Okay? We balance everything that is said with what? The scriptures. That's how we know the spirit that is speaking. All right? Nehemiah 6, 1 to 19. Holy Spirit, help me. Even me, I'm losing strength. Holy Spirit, help me. It's a very long one. Remember, O oh God, all the evil that Tobiah and Sambalat have done. And remember, no doubt, the prophet. He, this Nehemiah kept reporting them back to God. He does not have business with it. He answered nobody. The only person he was talking to was God. When things happen, who do you talk to? Friends, first. My bestie. Have you talked to the Holy Spirit? Have you talked to, your, to God? Ah, let me tell my bestie. Your bestie will tell you to go and hide this holy of holies. So on October 2, the war was finished. In just, fi- can you imagine all what I've been teaching since? Happened in 52 days. What a wahoo. That's a reality TV. Everything happened in just 52 days. And in the history of construction in the world, this is one of the most record-breaking projects. He said, when our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. During these 52 days, many letters went back and forth between Tobiah and the nobles of Judah. These guys don't stop. Ah, when they say, that's why I always tell you, our disposition in the mass movement is what? Is that of a soldier because life is war. It's the day you die or you see Christ in glory that you stop fighting. That's why they say, he has laid down his sword in victory. He has won. Life is war. They don't stop. Many letters kept going what? Back and forth. For many in Judah had sworn allegiance to him. That's to Tobiah. Because his father-in-law was Shekaniah, son of Ara. And his son was married to Jehohanan, was married to the daughter of... Be- I mean, he was a noble carcass. Blue blood. These are people that naturally should be connected with. That they will advise you. Don't you think... You know, in the rules of leveraging, you should network. Hello? Does this sound familiar? Network your way to the top. These are nobles. They were even coming after him. See what this guy was doing. I want to point your attention to something. They kept telling me about, the, about Tobiah's good deeds. And they told him everything I said. They were marketing Tobiah to me. Eh? They were promoting Tobiah to me. The same Tobiah kept sending threatening letters to intimidate me. Babylon always has a dwarf face to evil, intimidation and cutting. Is this to say, it's like, oh, the picture is scaring you. Because the way all of you just went silent. Do you want to stand up? I know you guys, Gen Z, you don't concentrate for too long, but this is what you must concentrate. Do you want to stand up? Eh? Oh yeah, stand up, stand up, stand up. If you are feeling tired, stand up, stand up, stand up. But this learning you must learn. Ah, <laughs> What I'm going taking you through right now is like my personal study. That's private study. Uh-huh. That's what I'm taking you through. Private study. You see, I sit down to design wisdom, leadership style, leadership. Program. You can walk around. Take a walk. 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 We've come to draw, draw, draw. Is the drinks, eh? Draw from you again. Hey, we've come to draw. I've come to. We're almost done. Draw, draw, draw from you again. Hey, I'm here to draw. Oh, draw, draw, draw from you again. Hey, I'm here to draw. Yeah. Oh. Have your seat and let's continue. Are the drinks here, please? Hello? It's coming. Okay, you have something in a bit. Just get me the coldest thing you can find, mortuary level. <laughs> that was to make you laugh, yeah. That is, it must be very blocked. Notice the two faced evil of Babylon intimidation and cutting. Intimidation to do what? To make you to begin to seek validation everywhere. 
Intimidation begins to make you that you are, it begins to present you like you are alone. You are the only one on your side. Oh God, you are the only one obeying God. Though. Everybody here on our camp, oh. everybody has followed level. Everybody has blended. Have you heard that before? Everybody has blended. Oh. You are the only one. Do you understand? Intimidation makes you feel like you are alone. And when you begin to feel alone, what happens? You begin to seek validation. You begin to seek new friendships. In the course of seeking new friendships, you begin to run into the hands of the people that really want to now deal with you. Are you following? And the other, on the other side, they'll be cutting you. Ah, nobody knows these games like politician. Hey, that guy is going to stop us from getting from our party winning this place. Oh, you know what's going to happen? Uh, go and toast him. Uh, give him how many commissioners do we have in uh, Lagos State? We have 27. I'll be okay. Oh, yeah, tell him we are seeding seven, seven seats, seven portfolios to his camp. On the other side, they are sponsoring petition in the newspaper. They are promoting a campaign of columny in the newspaper. This guy, when he was in this office, he stole so so amount of money. In fact, he's not a really indigenous of this state. His original ancestry is from Isaikiti in Ekiti State. He's only his great grandmother that came to Ibadan to come and do trade. He wants they will start stories. But on the other hand, it's the same people. They will be sending emissaries to your house. Go and meet with Daddy Sozo. Tell them our party means where. Ah, you, you, you didn't watch uh, what's, this, what's this movie again? This uh, uh, this Kabbalah Tiba movie, King of Boys. You didn't work in our boys? Go and tell him we mean well. We really want them in our camp. On the other time, they'll be, spe- I'll be spending money on journalists. Keep telling them nonsense about this guy. Keep sponsoring what did not exist about their party. Babylonian evil. The Bible said everything. Over. We are the one that did not read. <laughs> the Bible profiled everything. So you can say, when I tell you I can teach governance from the Bible, this is the shadow of it. Cutting and what? Cutting and what? <laughs> Always remember that the goal is not you. The goal is the work. You are not the focus. The focus is the work you have in your hands. They want to truncate that work. That work means a lot to them. That's what they want to stop. It's not you. So when they are cutting you and you begin to feel special, ah ah, Emilonwa, eh? Only me in this village. The president of the nation sent emissary of seven personalities to come and meet me. They don't send you. Now let's close out on Neymar. Last lesson from the book, from, from the life of this guy. And the wall was finished, and I set up the doors in the gates. The gatekeepers, singers, and levers were appointed. I gave the responsibility of governing Jerusalem to my brother Hanani. Again, I gave the responsibility of governing Jerusalem to my brother, to my brother. Who brought the first report in Neymar 1? Who brought that first report about the state of Jerusalem in Neymar 1? Are you there yet? Two lessons we can learn from here. Know when to quit the scene. Never self-perpetuate yourself in any office. No matter how extraordinary your success is, there is always a next. Quit when the vision is very loud. You wonder after building the wall, the man quit after being governor for 12 years. He should have naturally consolidated. He would have affirmed the fear of Sambalat and Tobiah that he really wanted to become king. Because now he has already attained that influence to become king. Everybody would have just submitted straight to him. There is even a record, a project to market. Ah, he was the one who built Lagos State. <laughs> you, get, you guys can boot, you can boot. It took you time. It took you time to, to, to ah! That is a project. This is the guy that rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. There is no other qualified person to lead us other than Brother Nehemiah. But hey, Nehemiah handed over. He did not hand over to just anybody. He handed over to some guy who was very strategic. Now let's look into this conversation. Avoid that temptation of self-perpetuation in office. Is a temptation that everybody is what always very prone to always hand over every successful task and take on other assignments. So, what am I saying? Know when to quit. Know when to quit. Some of you we have to quit offices you created and assume mentoring position. And I said to them, Do not leave the gates open during the hottest part of the day. He was still giving instructions. He was still, what, what, is, what, what is happening there? Mentoring, guidance, but he has seeded power. This is one of the problems we have in this side of the world, Africa. Always know when to quit. 
always know when to what? Quit. And when you are quitting, when you are quitting, always know who to hand over to. Now, let's talk about succession. It's always a very sensitive topic when we, when we discuss it in leadership. I'm sure recently on Twitter, it was a conversation when a transition happened in a very major ministry in the nation. And people were talking up and down. This ministry thing itself has become a business. And da, 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 Gen Z generation, God help you. Hanani was there from day one. He was the one who brought report of the bad state of Jerusalem. It is very obvious from this scripture that he returned back with Neymar to Jerusalem. And it is very obvious here that he, played a, he has played strategic roles all in between the building of that world. He was always there. In succession, you do what? You reward loyalists, but you entrust legacy to sons. Hmm. In leadership succession, hmm, Odip, you know, I, I said some of the things I'm teaching you. <laughs> 10, 15, 20 years, you go and find this message and listen again. You reward loyalty. Legacies can only be entrusted to sons. Mm. When I say sons here, yeah, sons does not mean sons by blood. No, that's not what I'm saying. It does not mean sons by blood. Sonship are people who qualify for the same consecration that you carry. When you are fasting, they were fasting. When you are going up the mountain, they were praying with you. When you are slaving and neighboring, they were there. I'm sure when Neymar carried a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other hand, Hanani was there doing sin. People who carry your consecration are those you entrust legacies to. You only reward loyalists. Let me break it down. Let me say, Master Mary, for example, if God says, oh, Toluchi, tonight your time is up, God forbid, I'm going to live to ripe full old age. If Jesus studies, Amen. to ripe full old age, till I'm low, I mean, full old age. But let's perhaps, like Yoruba say, Toluchi's enemy, God told him, or <laughs> He says, tonight, hand over her. I tell you, I know to hand over to. What did he? I know to hand over to. It is not by followership, it is by consecration. It's by what? Consecration. What qualifies for sonship? Responsibility. When you get to, at a point in your life, your parents will be the one feeding you, sending you school fees. If you get to a point, you'll be the one managing your father's estate. If you do not grow to that class of managing your father's estate, his staff, his staff, his long standing staff that has worked for him 35 years, we have more power than you, even though it is your father's estate. So you understand that scripture? When they heir, is but a child. When the heir begins to act as a child, he is not different from the slave in that same house. At some point, the slave will have more power. In fact, at some point, the slave is what is going to determine what the child we get. Because the son has failed to live up to what? What makes sonship? Responsibility. As you are growing, you take some things off your parents. There was a time my mom was taking a cooperative loan to send me to school. Now, I'm the one feeding her. I qualify as a son. Do you get that picture very well? It is consecration that separates sons from followers. That's what separates disciples from fans. And people like me, we have all class. Fans, oh, I just want access to Ruchi. Ah, Toluja, Toluja is my guy. I can call him right now on the phone and he'll pick the phone. He's my guy. Fans. But when it's time to pray, when I was abroad and I said, I needed prayers. You guys didn't have, did you have no idea what was going on there. How many people came for that meeting? 26. I never forgot. I told them, send me the picture. I want to see the face of everybody in that meeting. And send me their full names. Consecration. It is not those who are standing before you. It is those who are standing behind you. Uh-huh. Go and check Moses. Joshua was there lifting the hand. When they were at war, it was one of the folks lifting Moses' hand. Who else could have handed the baton of that leadership? This is how some of you lose out on inheritances that were originally yours. And I'm not talking in the context of ministry alone. Even workplace. And let me give you a scenario. Okay, there's an access banker here. So access bank was down, was down all through last week for some days, right? Dude, now let me explain to you. I worked in operations for so many years. You know for people in operations, ah, when, when network is down, oh, well, it is time to go and rest. He said, don't come to work for the next three days. We are trying to fix the oh, well, body. Meanwhile, network was down. The branch head, the regional marketing head that has a target for that region, that at the end of this quarter, you must deliver 500 million profits, net. Network is down for three days. That guy cannot sleep. 
because he has calculated what is the average profit we make on a daily from this zone. We make 50 million. Three days, we cannot work. 50 million revenue that should come to us has gone to GTB and Zenith Bank. Your branch here cannot sleep. You, you are thanking God. Ah! Let me go and visit my baby in Lautek. Oh, well, young banker. Let me spend that three days. When they call me, network is back, oh, I will travel to Lagos overnight and resume the following day in the office. But your manager cannot sleep. Your line manager cannot sleep. That's a slave. What will a son do? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. It is well, though. You know, it is well, Nigeria is a, is a prayer and it's a statement of comfort. <laughs> It can also be a greeting. <laughs> it is well, no? It is well, sir. Ah, this is network downtime. I mean, our targets are. But yet, you are the lowest staff in the office. You can even be a junior staff. Pola Hemashi target is, I suggest, sir, that maybe, you know, since we have some branches that are still working, maybe we still continue our marketing offline, even though we are not opening our branches. Are you following me? So maybe we just meet at uh, Marina in the morning and we just do cold calls to some offices and maybe by 1 p.m. we come back and we go to the nearby branches to go and post those revenue. How do you think that region ahead, we feel? Huh? What department did you say you are again? Sir, I'm just a teller. I'm a front desk teller. You mean you are just a teller? And you are thinking, even the head of marketing has not called me. The day that man is retiring, you'll be shocked. They will retire everybody above that teller and promote that teller to lead that zone. Yes or no? Does it follow the mindset of the Lord's Prayer that I taught you in discipleship school? Does it follow the mindset of stewardship? Eh? Does it follow the mindset of stewardship? Can you see that the mind of God is the same across all ages, regardless of the scripture you are reading? From Old to New Testament, the mind of God is constant. It's the same. So some of you that give yourself excuses, it's in the Old Testament. No. Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to perfect it. Am I talking to people here? Yes, sir. He happens a lot in the military force. They will look at one AIG. That AIG is the one that is loyal to me. Sack all the DIGs. Retire them. Give them money. Let them go. Promote him to be IG. It happens a lot. Every administration happens. It happens also in the military. Legacies can only be entrusted to sons. You reward followers. Mass movement, how do you reward followers? Ah, hope there's an opening in the UK. Okay, mass movement. Okay, as the send is coming to the UK in 2025, I've just been invited to be part of the, of the leadership team that will, I mean, that will stay and, and plan it. Very global movement. So, ah, okay, opportunity to travel. Oh, yeah, my key man. All oh, you guys have been on the road. Yeah, go, go, go. Bring your pali, bring your pali, bring your pali. Your pali. Carry everybody you travel. Uh -huh, reward. So at least we have disvagined your passports. You cannot begin to travel as, do you understand? Reward. But when it's time to entrust legacy, legacy can only be entrusted to sons. And in this case, slaves can qualify as sons. This is the problem we have in the kingdom. We have slaves qualifying as sons in our nation. That is why the wealth of our nation is drifting away from the church. <laughs> it's very sensitive. You guys are quiet. You guys are quiet. So people who imbibe your consecration, people who imbibe your discipline, people who partake of your sacrifices, when you lead in any form, always watch out for them. Always watch out for them. Those are the people that follow you beyond the paparazzi of following you. You know, your, your, your generation is the celebrity following generation. Anything that is loud and big, they are there. Anything that is just popping, vibing, they are, they are everywhere. They are everywhere. But there will be some people who are not only they are, they are not only committed to you as a person, they are committed to your ideology, they are committed to what moves you, and they will replicate results at your level. If you have been around me for two, three years, and you don't know what moves me, you have not met me. If you think what moves me is to organize events, ah, you have not met me. If you think what moves me is to just have beautiful music and I'll stand it, oh, yeah, no. or to just, ah, let's be creative, content creator, you have not met me. There is a basis for everything I do under the heaven. If you have been around me for two, three years, and you don't know, and you have not started recreating after that kind, ah, you are a fan, no? Oh? And you know fan, you know fan, it's always moving. As a literal fan, standing fan. Uh -huh. It's always moving. Uh, that's the way real fans too. <laughs> they are not getting it. Eh? They are not getting, the way it's standing, you see that head? You see? It's moving, right? See, it has moved again. It has moved again. That's the way real fans, that's the way they move. 
That is why there's always a rainy sensation every time. Entertainment has a new star every time. Even what we call ministry always has a star boy per season. There is always a trending pastor per season. There is always a trending worship minister per season. Are you following me? Uh -huh. But there are people, come rain, come shine. They are there. Those are the people you entrust legacy to. Are you here? <laughs> the way you guys are looking at me like, hmm. Galatians 4 and again, as long as the hair is a child, it does not differ from a slave. It does not differ from what? A slave. That brings us to the hand of Nehemiah. <clears throat> you know, when I was younger, Nehemiah was one of the most boring books of the Bible. To me. To me. It was one of the most boring books. When the Holy Spirit expands your mind, you begin to see some new realities. In the next 30 minutes, let's look at this final personality. You might have been wondering, ah, he has been talking about a, a male since Daniel, Nehemiah. Babylon also has a case model, a lady. Some of you even bear a name. A lot of you bear a name. Only God knows the number of people bear a name, even in the mass movement. She has been pricked about, she has been taught about severally. But let's look at some little truths. I'm not reading through. I'm just taking out some truths. And it might interest you. This is the only scripture that does not have a mention of the word God. God was not mentioned at any time. So that God is not mentioned does not mean God is not present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clap, clap. You want to clap, clap. <laughs> that God is not mentioned does not mean God... Are you following? <laughs> Don't worry, you almost be done. We are not having any other teaching meeting this year. Any other meeting is just prayer meeting. So we have to exhaust this. Now follow me to the book of Esther. Let's start from chapters number two. I just want to bring out some, uh, some little truths. Okay, you know what happened already? I don't need to talk about it. He had a feast, 120 days of merrymaking. And one day he got very drunk and he said, yeah, come my babe. Let her come and show herself. Come and do a runway for all my, all my friends, all the kings of the neighboring kingdoms. Let her come and display her beauty. Papa, as in, mesmerize them, dazzle them, flabbergast them, kill them, finish them. Power. <laughs> and the woman, because she was also busy, she was also hosting the queens and the stewards of the kingdom. Sincerely, she was busy. But on the day of my elevation, somebody has to misbehave. When God wants to orchestrate a movement for a son of the kingdom, there has to be a vacancy declared. And for a vacancy to be declared, somebody has to misbehave so that that seat to be thrown open. It is not fair, but favor is not fair. Mm. Uh, one, of the, one of the prayers we will pray today, favor is not fair. Favor is never fair. What you are celebrating and thanking God for, somebody is weeping. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The seat they appointed you to, somebody lost it. Somebody was sacked. Somebody was fired. Favor is not fair. So all of you that have a good, it's good to have good hearts. I like bang bang kirishori, loving everyone. It is good. But on the day God needs you to execute an assignment, there has to be a seat that will be thrown open. And whoever is on that seat, as long as it's not in alignment with the intent of God in that season, will be moved. You need to, that's why you need to, in fact, that's even the message of this teaching. So you need to check yourself, check your alignment. What exactly are you living for? So that you not be the vastity that is removed for somebody else to come and execute the kingdom agenda in this place you have been planted. That's even the lesson of this teaching. I'm starting from the end, from the, from the beginning. But let's still read. After Zaxi's anger had subsided, he began thinking about Vashti and what she had done and the decree he had made. So, he pers so his personal attendants suggested, let us search the empire to find beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint agents in each of these provinces. Ah, Miss, Miss Pasha. At this point, Babylon was being governed by the kingdom of Pasha. Please don't let that drink distract you. You can be sipping, but keep listening. Are you following me? This is Pasha. What's it called? Most beautiful girl in Pasha. Eh? MP. Okay. Let the king appoint agents in each province to bring these beautiful 
young women into the royal harem as fortress of Susa. Hey, guy, the king's Enoch in charge of the harem, we see that they are all given beauty treatments. Every one of them given beauty. Are you listening? No. After that, the young woman who most pleases the king will be made queen. Ah, the, the Bible can package information, eh? Any young woman that mostly pleases, I will get there. You will know what that please means. So. This, what is wrong? <laughs> May the Holy Spirit sanctify your thoughts, purify your intention. Are you here? This advice was very appealing to the king. So he put the plan into effect. At that time, there was a Jewish man in the fortress of Susa whose name was Mordecai, son of Jah. You all know, I will skip. I will skip to verse 7. This man had a very beautiful and lovely young cousin, Adassa, who was also called Esther. When her father and mother died, Mordecai adopted her into his family and raised her as her own. As her own. So Esther has no form of direct relation with Mordecai. Hmm. As a result of the king's decree, Esther, along with many other young women, was brought into the king's harem. Now listen, it gets interesting from verse 9. Her guy was very impressed with Esther and treated her kindly. Esther was what? Very. Esther was very what? Favor activated. Many women were brought into the harem for the Enoch that takes care of the king's concubines to administer beauty treatment. But he looked at one. I'm sure Esther was of good character. So what you lack in character, you can't use beauty to cover. What you lack in conduct and attitude, you can't, your handsomeness will not compensate for it. It will not compensate for it where you need to be distinguished. So somebody will say, but the Bible did not say exactly that. I will show you where I infer that in this story for you to know, know that ex Esther was of very good conduct. Was of very good conduct. Let's read further. Her guy was very impressed with Esther and treated her very kindly. He quickly ordered a special menu and provided her with beauty treatments. He also assigned her seven maids. See, she was not queen yet, but she was already being subject to queenly treatment. He already did what? Seven maids specially chosen from the king's palace. And he moved her and her maids into the best place in the... Uh -uh. Can we try to estimate the number of ladies that were taken? As big as Babylon was. I'm sure they can't be less than 3,000. Eh? So what made one person to be very distinguished? One girl to be very distinguished? Don't joke with your character, friends. As your rubber say, if anyone... You can package anything. You can even package spirituality. Your real self will always show through. Your real self will always reveal itself. You cannot hide for a long time. They always say time is always the true test of patience. It's like a relationship you guys are dating. You know when you start, the guy looks like him. He's like the next assistant Holy Spirit. He does no wrong. He just mesmerizes you. Before you wake up in the morning, a poem is already written. Before you finish working in the afternoon, another poem is ready. Girl is like assistant Angel Gabriel, the bringer of good news. He always makes you feel good. Just give it time. And he says, let's marry, let's marry. I like it, calm down. Ah. And after six months, you see that the tempo of the energy begins to drop. By one year, it is, ah, we can't even do one month without talking to each other. Eh? Somebody saying something here. Eh? In IGG. Initial gra gra. <laughs> Don't joke with your character, friends. And I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> what many people pray for, character robbed them of it. Yeah. What they spent months fasting, character robbed them. Strength of character, conduct, attitude. In fact, when I joined my character, I remember the first class we took was attitude. Attitude is everything. Attitude is what? Everything. That is why exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit is very important. The Christian work is transformative. 
It's, the life of Christ is supposed to be reflective in everything you do. You, you know there are some people, you, <laughs> Holy Spirit help me, you didn't plan on falling in love with them. But just the way they act, you're like, well, this guy is not handsome, but it's okay. I like him like that. <laughs> Have you been there before? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Ah, these ones are very old, you. they don't know. <laughs> See, that girl's not fine. She's not my spec, but you know what? I like her like that. They're just super good. And you have Holy Spirit. And yet, you can misbehave. You don't have sense at all. Am I counseling people here this afternoon? Yes, be nice. Be, be, somebody say be nice. be nice. You know, the desperation of surviving Nigeria is making people to go crazy. And we are losing morals, we are losing conduct. Yes. This, this is something that needs to be said. We are losing morals, we are losing conduct. We are losing every sense of good behavior because everybody is desperate. But let me tell you, seasons might come, seasons might go. The Bible is unchanged. The Bible is the mirror of our living. You will see where I was able to infer that Esther was very good. Let's read forward. As a result of the king's decree, Esther had not told anyone of her nationality and background because Mordecai had directed her not to do, not to do. Listen, this is a lady, a slave. Now has a privilege She's been favored in the harem of the most powerful king on earth at that time. And she has an uncle that she can now package as useless. That his instruction does not matter anymore. What does he know? I'm now in the court of sexes. After all, it's just a court official. He's just a gatekeeper in the kingdom. I'm now in the inner court. I now chill with the big boys. Lesson one, Babylon always positions those covenant relationships around you. Those covenant relationships is what makes you survive that system. And in everywhere God will place you, God will always position that covenant relationship around you. It might be a boss, it might be a friend, it might be a pastor. Somebody who is very familiar with the system you are now working that loves you for no reason. He's not even related to you by blood, but God has just positioned him around you to walk you through that corridor. Destiny helpers, we call them. That is what Mordecai was to Esther. But there is a certain new age wisdom that says mentors expire. Beware of expired fathers. That it is popular does not make it scriptural. Navigating Babylon requires what? Covenant relationships. Mordecai told her, do not dic disclose your identity. Compete normally. Point two, Babylon always throws out opportunities. When Babylon throws out opportunities, my friends, compete. That is why the topic of this teaching is called engaging Babylon, not confronting Babylon, not invading Babylon. Not fighting Babylon. <laughs> Babylon always throws out opportunities. Just like one that is thrown out. Somebody always misbehaves. A vacancy is thrown open in top management. A contractor will not fulfill the terms of his contractual obligation. And there will be need to advertise for another contractor. Babylon is always throwing out opportunities. Scholarships. Fellowships. Don't say, ah... The person that owns that uh, scholarship fund is, is an allergy. Ah, his money is not Muslim. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you guys can boot. His money is not Islamic. The boss he will give you is not Islamic. Go and compete and collect the money. Babylon always do what? Throws, open, oh, throws windows of opportunities open for competition. Get out there and compete. The power of the Holy Ghost to carry is to, is to distinguish you within those systems. So that as Daniel was, ex, was, was distinguished in Babylon, I had to ask him, what powers you die? And a pagan sister was able to know that there was a spirit of excellence operational over his life. You already carry it. You have prayed. You have fasted. Toluchi has imparted you. We are still impart you again. 
It is already there. Even though the semblance of what you are living right now does not look at it. Esther was a slave girl until that day she entered that harem with about a thousand other girls and preferential treatment started. That was when she knew all her prayer and fasting did not go to waste. If you do not compete, you will not know how God has gone ahead of you. Oh, is somebody been blessed this afternoon? If you do not stand out to compete, you have no idea how far God has gone ahead of you. So when there is an opportunity in Babylon, stand out and compete. Step out on the scene and compete. The only differentiator is let your basis of engagement be completely scriptural. Am I talking to somebody here this afternoon? Still the same Esther. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's wondering, ah, is it the same Esther? This is not how Esther has always been taught. Locking down opportunities in Babylon always requires that mentorship. Competing in Babylon always needs that person. God positions them. You don't hunt after them. We don't even induce them with gifts. That's another strategy that is being taught. The gift of a man makes room for him. Now it has now been turned to a tool of manipulation. So honor somebody, honor him, honor him, honor him till we have to open his doors to you. What can I do for you? But any relationship that will last, God himself orchestrates them. When Mordecai was adopting Esther, she had no idea that it was mentoring for queenship. Even though he's a slave adopting another slave. It never looks like it. Most times the people you want as mentors are people that are above. But there is somebody there that God is saying, this is the person. So for those of you who are always running after virality, anything that is viral, that's why your papas are always changing. Some of you have plenty of papas. Everybody's papa, nobody's papa. May God help you. <laughs> Follow me. Every day, Mordecai would take a walk near the courtyard of the harem to find out about Esther and what was happening. Did you read that? So when I come after you, Madam, this dress you are wearing, does it reflect the Holy Ghost you carry on your inside? Ah, okay, to change your journey. Ah, you know go. The next thing, they don't talk to you again. In fact, they will meet you of their, they will meet you of their status. Ah, God help you. What's that proverb of Yoruba? We are trying to save the hen from dying. I'm going to move the lower. All on you, you're going to see it all. Good. The day they serve you breakfast, hot and chilly. Eh? Press down, shake it together, running over. You will cry back to me, and I will laugh. You know, you know, you know I never fail to laugh. I will, I will still cancel you, but I will laugh. Because it is an error that could have been avoided, I have been issue. Mordecai will do what? Walk around. What is happening to that lady? God, how is my daughter doing? Is she of good conduct? Is she doing fine? Is she well catered for? Okay. They are all around you. Your eyes are in different places. That's why you are not seeing them. Uh -huh. Before each young woman, come and see the uselessness of these kings. Before each young woman was taken to the king's bed, she was given prescribed 12 months of beauty treatment. Kilo D. By the time they are coming, they are looking like moon star, moon star, and all the galaxies are put there shining. Like, Kilo D. Six months with the oil of myrrh, followed by six months with special perfumes and ointment. When it was time for her to go to the king's palace, she was given a choice of whatever clothing or jewelry she wanted to take from the... Everybody's at liberty to determine a styling choice. My styling cho choice is Arabia. Me, I want Turkish. Oh, I want to keep mine Victorian. What you want, you'll be given. Listen to Esther. That evening... She was taken to the king's private room. And the next morning, she was brought to the second harem, where the king's wife lived. So that's what we call sampling, Abby. Sampling. It will sample everybody around. There she will be under the care of Shagas, the king's Enoch, in charge of the concubines. The concubines had their own SA. SA, special duties. Concubines. Dash, concubines. She will never go to the king again. Unless he had spe especially enjoyed her and requested her by name. God bless you, my brother. You are, you are following me. Out of how many girls? So you know that whatever will have distinguished anybody at this point must be the favor of God. Because how many names 
you know, okay, I know I don't have players in the mass media, amen. I know I have ex-players, but I don't have current players. Amen. 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 If you are still playing, don't let me catch you. But if you have ever played before, you know that you get to a point of confusion. You have no taste. Do you understand? You have, tri- you have tried everything and anything. So when, I mean, that's the point of confusion for a lot of guys. When is now time? Or when you are coming of age, come and settle down. They don't even know what is choice anymore. They have tasted dark, thin, white, fat, every, all, all kinds of specification and variety. Do you understand? So what could have distinguished anybody in this kind of arrangement? Talk to me, guys. I, you know, I try to break the Bible down in contemporary context so that you can see the picture very well. What could have distinguished anybody here? Eh? Favor of God. When it was Esther's turn to go to the king, she accepted the advice of Igai. Listen, the Enoch in charge of the harem. She asked for nothing except what he suggested. Ah, I too know has robbed a lot of you of opportunities. Oh, ITK, the corridor you're about to walk, somebody has been walking it every day for the past 50 years. He had seen queens come and go. He had seen concubines come and go. He knows the king's choice. He knows that when a lady comes to the presence of the king, this is how, this is the smell he loves. He loves uh, strawberry. He does not like you smelling like mango. (laughs) He loves vanilla. Do you understand me? This is the kind of robe that turns him on. This is his speck. Wisdom demands, but what, what is the instruction? Everybody gets what they request for. Use your hand to mess up yourself. So that it will not be said that, Shebi, why do you want to say that you wear this? Why do you, why do you want to ruin my chances? But in Esther's case, wisdom required her. Are you following me? To listen to what the chief Enoch suggested. Don't go and before me, I know a lot. Eh? I know a lot where you're supposed to keep quiet and just listen. Where you're supposed to take instruction, don't go and be vituperating, don't go and be dabbing. Where you're supposed to just be taking instruction. I too know has robbed a lot of us of opportunities. You know, this is like another mentor. At this point, Edgar has also become what? Another mentor to Esther. And he list, she listened rather to the instruction of Edgar. Whatever Edgar recommended, she took. That's not the time to say, no, 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 no. I have a personal styling choice. There's some kinds of weave on I can't use. No matter how highly priced they are, I can't wear them. This is me. I do me. And the world will tell you, do you be you? Who are you? <laughs> this Enoch has seen many yous passing that place over the years. She has seen many concubines enter the king's chambers many nights and never return back there to the rest of their life till they died. And they can't marry anybody again. Wisdom, not even wisdom, self. Common sense will require that you listen to that kind of. Hello? <laughs> Esther was taken to King Saxis, and the king loved Esther more than any other woman. He was so delighted with her that he set his royal crown on her head and the, immediately, he didn't even wait for the protocol. What did the protocol say? This is where I know that you are following. You will come in, you will sleep over, you will return back to the harem. When the king now calls for you by name. In this case, Esther was so hot that the king could not wait till the next day. Immediately, Esther was declared, the day God will elevate you to be instant, there won't be room. And we're going to pray this afternoon for favor according to the order of Esther. We always pray it. Distinguishment among a thousand. When many people show up for something, to celebrate the occasion, he gave great banquets in Esther's honor for all his nobles and officials. He declared a public holiday. Ah ah, or molest are you? Who is very Adasa here? See there. Listen, even after all the young women had been transferred to the second harem and Mordecai had become palace official, Esther continued to keep her family background 
and nationality a secret, she was still following Mordecai's instruction. But she's now still queen. She is still what? Ah, trust my people. No. New level, new fathers. New level, new papas. New level, new mentors. Somebody became queen. The advice that gets you to a seat is enough to keep you there. It's just enough to keep you there. But what, is, what does the devil do? The devil now infiltrates you, brings the Sambalat and Tobias. They come around you. All kinds of counsel will start flowing. No. Madam, you are king now. You know what? Uh, the power you don't know you are, they will show you that you have that power. They will derail you. When you are ruminating on something, sir, why are you thinking about this thing? Is this what is giving you sleepless night? Sir, it is just a veto. It's your pen. Just sign. She is it that she was soon here. Oh, no, no, ah, no, 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 no. Sir, you are, you are not just president. You are president and commander in chief of the armed forces. You are one of the most powerful presidents in the world. One person, Musi Alori. You see the Babylonian, eh? Babylonian recruitment playing out all over. It never stops, it's a cycle. It never stops. But this lady maintained just one voice of instruction. She had become queen. The king did not know she was a Jew. Neither was Agai, the head of Enoch, neither was anybody in that court aware that she was a Jew. Because why? Mordecai said so. We don't outgrow covenant relationships, that's what I'm saying. So some of you, let me tell you, some of you, you need to go and write apology letters to some people. Uh -huh. People got positioned around you and you messed up that relationship. You misbehaved. You dishonored and disrespected voices of history. I'm not saying... In each season, you saw that when Esther was in the, in the harem, her guy was the picture, okay? God will be introducing different people into the picture as you are growing. But one new relationship does not invalidate the other. Every one of them is complementary. Are you following me? Every one of them is what? This is wisdom. For, I've, not, I've not said only split anything. This is wisdom from the Bible. This is how some people are able to log that relationship for 10 years. 50 years. Have you ever observed a redeemed convention? The pastors that preach? Some of them don't even have big churches. Some of them, their churches are not a quarter as big as the smallest parish of our city. But that religion will always bring them. Why? These are relationships. When you ask, those, those relationships are over 40 years. Those are relationships by consecration, not by propriety. I think somebody asked that Joseph's question. You know what he said? He said, I want to be sure that the people I'm bringing to preach are people who are conscious of going to heaven and they want to carry everybody following them along. Not those who are building ministry. The Holy Spirit will give you understanding. Are you following me? Yes, we don't outgrow covenant relationships. Now let's close out finally on Esther. Have you been blessed? Yes, you don't want to appear so. <laughs> now the final point on Esther before I close out of course you know the story of Haman for whatever reason Mordecai refused to bow to Haman every time he passed for whatever reason but I think the reason is still based on the scriptures because to a Jew you are not permitted to bow down to anything or anybody except the true living God so even though Mordecai was in Babylon he was living the construct of a Jew are you following me? I, the Bible did not specify, but I can deduce from the scriptures that that is what was happening. For that, you know the rest of the story. A man got furious. He paid money to the treasury. Let us con conduct what we call an ethnic cleansing. Let us wipe out these people. What audacity. Me that the king has... You know that story already. I just want us to provide the response of Esther. Are you following me? When Mordecai learned about all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on ball up and ashes, and went out in the city crying with a loud and bitter voice. He went as far, blah, blah, blah. And as the news of the king's decree reached all the provinces, there was great mourning among the Jews. They fasted, wept, and wailed, and many people lay in ball up and ashes. When Queen Esther's maids and Enoch came and told her, did you hear what I said? At the beginning of the class? Always create a room for feedback. Esther's reality has changed. Now she's a queen. To the most powerful man on the surface of the earth. As re her reality has completely changed. She could have become completely cut off from what was happening on the streets. But she had a feedback mechanism. Esther's maids 
And he knocks came and told her about Mordecai. She was deeply distressed. Even though she's now queen, by identity now a Persian, a Babylonian, Babylopassian. But her heart was the kingdom. People went to our offices. When their pastors even called them, please tell them I don't want to talk to you. I'll tell him I'll call him later. I'm busy. I'm in a conference. Now, new reality. I'm very busy now. The same man you are coming to beg, Daddy, ah, we are pursuing this post. Oh, ever me fast and pray. They said there's one Aboki also contending. And he asked God Father, this any president has stamped on his own uh, resume. Me, I don't know anybody. I only know God and you, sir. Ah. <laughs> you are the only God that ah, people can whine you when they need something. Come and ask me. You are the only God I know in this life. Yeah, mommy, don't worry. Let us pray. Let's do seven days. On this matter, ah, except God, God has not called me. This is, you will get it. I will fast for a seat I'm not sitting on. I'm not even the kind of person that will say, yeah, go and bring seven goats, uh, seven, eh? seven uh, palm oil, uh, seven uh, ororo, seven packs of maggi, everything, seven, 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 seven packs of rice. Daddy, my great dollar rice package, you ready? Eh? <laughs> With 700,000 to join, everything, seven, 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 to, stand, to feel mysterious. So everything now is seven, seven, seven. Seven is the code, seven is the code, seven is the code. The spiritual code from heaven. <laughs> eh? Perfection and completion. Bible scholar. <laughs> Are you following, guys? Our heart was still kingdom. And this person, ah, come, all this, jackpot, jackpot, ah, sir, please, I'm going for interview tomorrow. Just speak a word. I believe if you speak a word, the Lord will favor me. The odds are against me. You know, I didn't even finish from Ibadopoli. I didn't even graduate. <laughs> but if it's the Lord's will, the favor of the Lord goes before you as a pillar of fire. Anybody that does not need to be in that room, when you walk in, they move. In the name of Jesus. They will collect the visa. We will even know when they travel again. We we'll just wake up and enter Facebook and be seeing picture. London shilling. We don't even know where they travel anymore. Not even the common decency and decorum of saying, ah, sir, just to show you, I'm traveling. Okay, ah, God bless you. I follow us here. We don't, we don't need anything from you. Before you came here, we were here. After you are gone, we will still be here. And we we'll still keep moving forward. We have never needed anything from your post to move forward. Do you, but do you get my point? Her heart was still connected to kingdom. Ah, my uncle Monica is willing. What's happening to my people? They're my people. What's happening to them? Even though the palace is not even aware she is Jewish. When something is happening to the body of Christ. Guys, our friends in government, what's happening now? Huh? Why is this government making this kind of law? And you are there. You know, when you're on the other side of the divide, you might not exactly get the picture of what is going on on the inside. They make you feel stupid. Like you've not had any kind of exposure in your life. Like, you're, be, like before you entered ministry, you have not even been in government before. You know, it's not exactly what it looks like. So, you know, am I going in masses? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my people, my people. I hope you get the point of what this I, 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 my, in fact, my wife asked me yesterday, she said, how do students really appreciate this, this teachings? Because she takes time, she even, I'm sure she's even online. She takes time to listen. Like, I hope they appreciate, <laughs> sorry. Because they won't, you know, she was like, hey, this, <clears throat> in 10, 15 years, some of you will return back to, you will find this video. Because this construct will start playing out live and you will remember me. Ah, Toluchi said this thing. See, the only thing I want to hear, I might not be able to hear them. If Jesus studies, when I'm being lowered to the grave, if Jesus studies in my ripe old age, the only thing I want to hear from everybody is, this is one man that never failed at telling us the truth. All he did was to expose us to the entire counsel of God. He never sugarcoated the truth. That is why I'm doing this. I won't say more. Then Esther sent for attacked one of the king's Enochs, who had been appointed as an attendant. She ordered him to go to Mordecai and find out what is troubling him. Still, the connection is still there. Mordecai was just a palace gate official. This is Queen Esther, royalty, commoner. The commoner was the voice of instruction. Move forward. So Atat went out to Mordecai in the square in the front of the palace gate. 
Mordecai told him the whole story, including the exact, of, exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai gave Atat a copy of the decree issued in Susa that called for the death of all the Jews. He asked Atat to show it to Esther and explain the situation. He also asked Atat to direct her to go to the king to beg for mercy and plead for her people. Because when a Babylonian king makes a decree, it is final. He can't even reverse himself. Now, so Atash returned to Esther with the message. Then Esther told Atash, go back to, and relay this message to Mordecai. All the king's officials and even the people in the province know that anyone who appears before the king in his inner court without being invited. Can you imagine? King's inner court, not God's inner court. Meanwhile, they were calling somebody to go and hide in God's inner court. This is the, <laughs> do you get it? This is the king's inner court. Even the queen, queen, his wife, his babe, his most beloved, if she appears in that inner court without being summoned, death. She was given excuses. She was given what? And you know that the Lord says this is what we should do. If I do this, I will not... Ah, <laughs> hear what Mordecai said. So, Atat gave Esther's message to Mordecai. Mordecai sent his reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment. Maru. Maloro rara. Eh? Don't think for a moment that because you are in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are being killed. You know, we are both considering your identity. By that time, the world will know. Eh? In yeah. Kota say. Till if you don't know. <laughs> Listen, if you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows? If perhaps you were made queen for such a time. Listen, every office of influence that God will give to you carries an assignment. There is always an assignment attached. God does not invest influence anyhow. God does not invest wealth, resources, power anyhow. So by the time you're expressing some sort of lifting that you don't think you qualify for, <laughs> you had better begin to draw back into your secret place and begin to say, Allah no me alpha. Allah no me alpha. Kilombo, kilombo. This thing you are doing, I don't understand. I don't qualify for this normally. I don't qualify for this. But these things you are doing, I love it. Father, whatever you are doing, continue because I love it. But Father, I know you much more. What exactly do you want me to do? See, salvation will come from elsewhere. God will declare that seed vacant and raise another savior. But you and your family, you will all die. And Esther sent this reply, go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will also do the same. If she declared that fast right now, sure she has been doing it before. It was a practice. So the favor that you saw that was operational in that camp was a prayer she prayed many years ago. Fasting, she fasted many, many years ago. So that you are fasting right now, you are not getting results. Wait now. Nah. And Toluji said last year was Holy Ghost flight. I've not, I've not even flown from Ibadan to Lagos. One of the shortest flights you can have in Nigeria. And she's saying Holy Ghost flight. He's the only one flying. Wait now. Nah. Calm down now. Nah. Are you following me? Yes. Calm down. He wants to declare another one now. Nah. He don't declare that. That fasting was a practice. She knew what to revert to. Immediately. She did not think through it. She said, what? I am my maid, or even all of us, we will fast. Are you following me? We will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, are we going to see the king? If I must die, I must. If you are afraid of death, there are assignments you cannot undertake. God cannot commit to assign some assignment into your hand if you are afraid of death. When I was coming to Ibadan, on Thursday, I drove out of my gate, 3.45 a.m. And sometimes, you know, it's so normal to me. I just think, like, Toluji, you are crazy. And like, this is 3.45 a.m. in the city of Lagos. And you are approaching Tommy language. You are going out of Lagos. And you are just cool, just living, listening to hymns and just worshiping God and speaking in tongues. I fear nothing. The only thing I fear, no executing my assignment before I go. Death, I conquered that fear many years ago. God cannot invest things into you when you are afraid of death. There's the posture that can unlock some certain level of greatness and execute some assignments in the kingdom, you have to be, ah, you have to be fearless. You have to what? You have to what? 
be completely fearless. If you're that kind of person, hey, you go, hey, if you're that guy, ah, if you're that, he, you know some people cannot fly. How do you fly? Ah, and you are praying for global ministry. How do you want to go? Can I go? <laughs> How do you want to go? And you are saying, Lord, expose us to the nations. We take the nations by the power of your name. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you have given me global ministry. When it's time to fly, ah. <laughs> they are always easy to see the crafts. People fly for the first time. When it's time to take off, you see them. Mommy, I calm down. Mm. Ah, oh, mommy. Mm. If you're unfortunate to sit beside one of them, ah, you can't enjoy that flight. Especially when the plane is going through turbulence. Ah, oh, ah mommy, you must change. Yeah, how to calm down, see how to flow. Eh, ah, oh, God. Eh. They will bring out one sound. Oluwa. Be a bad in the new, you know. If you know what you know, what you know, you want to get mommy, calm down. I want pilots and Mutsi, you know, and Jack Esso, Esso. Are you following me? Are you praying for global ministry? Do you know the number of times we've been there? Eh? <laughs> There's one flight that we undertake. January 3rd. I'm already pitying myself. <laughs> I'm already pitying because I'm going to do about three stops <laughs> in three different countries before getting to where I'm going. Why? I'm looking for cheap tickets. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand? Ah. If you fear that, God cannot invest some capacities into you. Mm. That is why I can wake up 1 a.m. and enter the road. Prayer walk. Ah, my seat. I really enjoyed prayer. My seat. Ah, I prayed for, oh gosh. 1 a.m. The guys that live with me in Adioyo, you are there now. In Adioyo. They just see gate. Bang, 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 bang. Mutilo. From Adioyo. Straight. Ring road. All the way down. To Mokola Jialen. At 1 a.m. Jialen. Prayer walk. Park. Declare on the city. Declare. Anyway, I meet a junction. I know what junction means in the Yoruba concept of covenants. Declare what junctions. And I, and I move back. One year, I fear nothing. Sometimes I'll see people crying. Want to jump back me? Oh, want to jump back? In fact, there was one day I saw one girl, she was stabbed. She was bleeding seriously. She was stabbed. You know, they were trying to collect her phone or something. She was bleeding. She was coming. Obviously, obviously, she was coming from the club. On, on, I do your road there. Where is it again? Is it here or there? Yeah. I fear nothing. I'm fearless. The posture that can get things done for God is if I perish, I perish. Ah. So be it. This is the secret of impact of the apostles. They knew the places they were going will cost them their lives. But I will rather take the gospel there and launch it. Let it be that another person will come in and consolidate it. But that this gospel will get to this place, I will take it. Let me die there. It is on that, on that harvest that all of us are doing falafolo. I tell you, the, mis the present misbehavior right now was procured by the blood of several saints. Several matters we do not know their names. Where did we go in Ekiti that we were coming? Or Benny Luke? Where did we go in Ekiti that we were coming? And we were looking at one gravestone. We saw one gravestone and I saw a white name. Ah, and I was asking, who is this person again? Who is ah? This is one missionary. He was a young doctor who came here when he was 21 in 18 something. I was like, look at the old city. The, what am I calling city self? What is the size of the old? What will make somebody come here at 18 something, live and die there? Him and his wife. We saw their grave by the small church there. And you think heaven does not know their names? You think heaven does not know their names? You think it is we on Instagram that we are serving God? You think all the missionaries in Ilobo, in Lanlate, in Okeo, in Shaki, in Lilesha Ibariba, all those... <laughs> you think God does not know them? Heaven does not have their record? You think it's by the fact that we will fill up stadium that God is a portion of reward in heaven? Five talents, good and... Good and two talents, good and thank you. So Mordecai went away and he did everything as Esther had ordered him to confront some certain evil in Babylon. Ah, you must be a prayo. You must be a what? A prayo. That fasting and praying did not start that day. It was a lifestyle, I'm sure, that was obtainable when she was living with Mordecai. That was why they could relate with that information, that intelligence. Organize people, let them begin to fast and pray. Even in the palace, we will do the same. You know how that story ended. Now, let me close out engaging Babylon series here. Give me the closeout charts. Give me the closeout charts. Now, see, this is the chart 
post Daniel. This is after Daniel. Okay? You can see every personality present. In every dispensation, God always has three offices that he makes use of. Three key offices must be present. Now look, we always have the king. The king does not necessarily have to be a Jew. The king does not necessarily have to be a Christian. Are you following me? Are you listening? The king does not necessarily have to, because in this case, it was Cyrus a Pasha that implemented prophecy. It was Cyrus the Pasha that commanded that all Israelites, it's time, begin to relocate back according, according to what? The Messianic prophecies, the book of Isaiah documented, book of Jeremiah documented, that Daniel found, and I, Daniel, found by books that our period of slavery is what? 70 years. King Cyrus, it is time. Cyrus gave a, gave a decree. We are all Israelites. Begin to return back. All, all that happened before here. You can see the king. You can see the prophets. You can see the key actors. In every point of nationhood, there is always that presence of a king who might not necessarily be a Christian or a believer like you. Then a prophet who is always the voice of instruction voice of counsel, voice of reminder. And God never at any point in time left Israel without a prophet. And key actors, you and I, we, we who model both offices, king and priests. People like Daniel, people like Nehemiah, people who are personal altars on their own, though they are not priests by office. Are you following me? But they had act, anybody that has an active altar is a priest. Are you following me? They have very active priesthood. And they have a secular vocation. Nehemiah was what? A cup bearer. S.A. Domestic Affairs. S.A. Special Duties. He's the one that vets anything that goes in as intake into the king's mouth. Can you see that movement? Now to Esther. When Ezra finished his own season, Esther came on the scene. Esther was only married for a short while. Because shortly after that whole story, her husband, Sextus, was assassinated. The son of Queen Vashti entered. Attack Xerxes. So Esther was now queen mother. Who was the queen that you think was beside Atazaxis when Nehemiah came to request to, to go and rebuild the world of Jerusalem? Are you thinking? Are you following? Who, who did you think that queen was? God always positions people in dispensations. So because God is using you in a season, you think you are the next best thing after sliced bread. God has a positionment, if there's an English like that, across dispensations. He has sons layered in the system. So don't ever begin to think <laughs> that you are all that. Just like Elijah was, Lord, I'm tired. If I kill me now, eh, kill you. You are exhausted. You are tired. Well, little mommy. But I have 7,000 people like you. They've never bowed down to any God aside me in hiding. I only need to flip like 10 of them out. They will replace you successfully. God always has, do you know, God always has a plan for his children. God never leaves his children in limbo. Across every dispensation, he always has a plan to their what? Establishment and emancipation. Across every what? After Esther's season, Nehemiah came on the scene. Can you see? He came to rebuild the wall. Ezra did what? Ezra built the temple, first flights. Nehemiah did what? Rebuild the walls. Everybody had a kingdom project of restoration. Flip the next slide. I have many slides there. Isaiah prophesied everything that will happen here. By the time this started, Jeremiah was already positioned. God never leaves us without a prophet. Can you see this chart? Just after that season of Daniel, we don't know whether Esther met her or not, Esther was already positioned in the palace. Waiting for the next king that will take over. By the time Ezra and Nehemiah came on the scene, Malachi was already positioned. When that season was done, New Testament unveiled. God always has a plan in place for his children. All of us are just stage actors in a play that the end is only determined by God. So when it's your season, it is just your season. The satellite only moved to your position in that season. There are many other people 
that God has positioned in private. I'm sure Esther was there when Daniel was alive. But Esther was not known to them. She was still a slave girl somewhere in Persia. Because when Daniel was on the scene, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon was the one ruling. Before Esther came on the scene, Persia had conquered, had conquered Babylon. So the government moved from Babylon to Susa. That's the headquarters of Persia. And the state moved again. I'm sure Daniel was still somewhere. Do you get what I'm talking about here? This should make us humble. God always has children positioned. Your only duty is to live out the construct of your assignments. And we all have just one assignment. The establishment, the enthronement, and the advancement. Remind me again because I just said that on the auction. The what? Establishment one, enthronement two, and the advancement of the kingdom. So if you are made SA today, enthronement, establishment, advancement. The day anywhere you find yourself does not align with kingdom agenda. You have lost that seat. You are like Vashti. You'll be replaced soon. Another timeline. 70 years of captivity. Zerubbabel returns. The temple is built. Ezra returns and the law is taught. Nehemiah returns. Can you see people implementing different faces of kingdom agenda across different... Malachi is writing, is closing Revelation until the John the Baptist is revealed again to begin to announce the coming of another kingdom. God never leaves his children in limbo. Your only duty is to play your part. So where exactly are you positioned in the kingdom agenda for this season? Where exactly is your placement? Beyond your regular service in church and all of that, where exactly is your placement? A lot of you, the blessings you are looking for, you cannot get. Why? You are not positioned ready for it. Your consecration is not ready for it. There are other slides there. There are other slides. There are other slides. I want them to see. Can you see? Cyrus, return of Zerubbabel, and Joshua the high priest. Cambyses, which is, which is Darius, rebuilding of Jerusalem under Ezra. He stopped that project. Darius came, already prophesied by prophet Haggai and Zechariah. Temple was completed. Xerxes was introduced, another king. Esther was moved into the palace of Xerxes in that season. After that, his son, attacked Xerxes. Return of Ezra. Again, Nehemiah now returns to build the wall. Another new prophet was introduced, Malachi. Followed next, New Testament, John the Baptist. The Bible is a sequence. God never at any point leaves his children in limbo. And listen to me, this is very controversial. I will say it all the same. God positions people like Esther within pagan environments. You know, ideally, the intent of God is for sons to become kings. But when sons disobey, like the children of Israel disobeyed, and they found themselves in slavery, that is already an anomaly, okay? For them to be preserved, God will take some people in their kind to go and position them in that system. So that is why you will see some people who are prophetess this, but yet they are married to a Muslim governor. It's a very controversial teaching, but I'll teach you all the same. Originally, it's not so. The intent of God is for us to live out our construct as kings and priests, so that we are the most preferred as occupiers of any office. But in the season when children now act as slaves, and slaves now act as heirs, they will serve slaves. But for their preservation, because God always loves his people, for their preservation, he will take a few among them, like Esther, to be in that system, to be able to influence decision making, to favor his own people. He will take a Daniel, take a, uh, a Meshach, he will take a Nehemiah to go and serve as SA drinking matters. So that he is close to where power is. So that where decision needs to be taken, somebody can be there to stand up on behalf of the kingdom. A decision we should be taking normally by ourselves. He only points to one fact. Children who are living the construct of slaves. Slaves have now become sons. But for them not to be completely destroyed, it will position a few. Am I talking to people? <laughs> I know it is challenging theology. It's challenging doctrine. It will not do what? Position people in that system. So that when this one needs to be taken, that will not be favorable towards the kingdom. They will be able to stand and sit with their honey on the bed. Honey? Or they will try for me. Will try. I want to let you around people here. Just say it. Okay, so be it. That's fine. Do I go to Fenian? If that one makes you happy, I just want you to be happy, my darling. That's all. A kingdom agenda executed on the bedroom of a pagan. Am I talking to people here? Yes, 
But where should we strive for? We should strive for that point where we are the ones that are the key decision makers. But in a situation when we are not living under construct, God will now look out for people. That is where we find ourselves as a kingdom across the world. Rise up on your feet. <laughs> hmm. I don't even know the prayer point to call for you. But before I want you to pray, please help me play that video. Before you pray, so that uh, anybody that is outside should come in. Everybody should come out. Watch this video. So that you know that, uh, please give, bring him that drink. Ah, Holy Spirit, thank you for strength. Thank you for strength. Are you ready? Yeah, play, play, play. Where's the video now? Raise the volume now. I can't see from here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Can you open the brightness? Father, Lord, we are moving to the next phase of impact and of ministry. Father, Lord, thank you for all the massive results you have commanded to our hands. Thank you, Lord, for the crusades. Thank you, Lord, for the many lives of young people that have been killed. Thank you, Lord, for people that you have taken from the back door and nearby towns and villages and you have sent to the nations of the world for the massive. <coughs> thank you, Lord, for everything you are going to do to our hands. Lord, we use this opportunity today to do all the glory and the praise of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take all the glory. Take all the praise. Take all the thanks. Everything the world has planned for us for, Father, we will turn it back unto you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, this is another level. This is another phase of ministry. If I have no ministry in my prayer that started like us, has been able to get up to this point. But Father, we have chosen us as lonely men, mean men, to showcase your power and your glory, to showcase your strength and your might. Our Father and our God, we are commencing this journey with you in the name of the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for making the hearts of men, that's why we are very, very the hearts of men to be benevolent to us, <coughs> to support the work we are doing. Father God, we ask, oh God, this is a new phase. We do not even have the capacity for this, but Lord, we have started this in your capacity, in the capacity of what you have provided for us on the course of our in the capacity of our inheritance as your sons and daughters, Lord, we stand on this land which will remain the master of our city. Father, Lord God, to make the following declaration that on this land, as we commit in payment, Lord, everything, every resource in money, in people, in capital, in assets, in water, in equipment, whatever it is called, Lord, we call, for, call them forth from the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. Lord, our testimony, and we give all this one can see, many can be out. I'm sure they started good, they started big. They are abandoned right now. Some of them no inhabitants, no activity, nothing is happening. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I stand on this ground this morning. I stand on this ground, my feet to the ground, in accordance to your word, to show one thing, that everywhere the soul of my Jesus has stand, you will give it unto me as an inheritance. According to your promise to your servant Moses, Lord, I stand on this ground in the name of Jesus, and I decree that on this ground nations of the world will come on this ground. Amen. People of different races of different colors. Okay, now, let's go. Shout out, let's go. 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 Let's go.
é vedo caçara para o chão. Vem pegar o chão.
Reverenka Bosata Boża. You know, as that video was playing, what I was just doing before my eyes, because Let me tell you the back end story to this. For you to know that these things I teach works. I'm trying to remember a scripture. Oh, most excellent Theophilus, this is the account of the things that Jesus began to do and to teach. The challenge is we have a lot of preaching teachers, not doing teachers. I don't teach what I don't do. You are here March 20. You know, there are so many of God descended on I just started weeping there. March 20, when I played the first part of that video. Now, let me tell you the background. You know, God has given me that word about, about two or three years ago during the lockdown. That begin to prepare, please, that you are moving to the zone of legacy. Yeah, moving around. Yeah, I know you have a lot of energy, but you need to localize this work. And I was like, we are not a church, so how do we do this? And the first thing I had, the first thing the Holy Spirit worked on for me was the mind shift. It opened me up to mission communities globally. I started seeing their mode of operation. I saw that they all had a base, a place called a base. It took me to few, I mean, few nations like that where I saw, I mean, one of, one of the, I'm, I'm still going to happen in, in, in January. Beautiful, lovely place. And I started envisioning, and I started praying. You know. You remember that day we were at Chapel of Resurrection? Preparing towards Mass 9. You know, my normal practice after rehearsal, I'll get on the keyboard, I'll just start worshiping, and few people I know are asleep will come around. That was when the song, I wanna see your glory. That was where those songs came from. That was where even Moria knew, but that's where, I mean, he resonated back again. I mean, and many songs within that season. You remember that particular night that I was talking about? I shared my experience while traveling down from Lagos, and the Holy Spirit opened my eyes. And I parked somewhere in Ogede. Who remembers that story? And the Holy Spirit told me in the car that, open my eyes and started seeing some buildings that if this, whoever built this kind of house, if they can afford a property in this place, told you you can afford it. So all these stories you heard, 200 million, 500 million, 700 million, have you even made the first attempt? And I remember that money I parked. I asked the mechanic, Eloni Lenlofumbi, and he gave me one ridiculous figure. And I just, it didn't mean much because Honestly, between you and me, I didn't see us as having that capacity. I entered the car and came to Riazal that night, Chapel of Resurrection. And after the Riazal, my teaching and all of that, I was just worshiping. If you remember, there was one that was so intense. I remember Tommy Tush was there. It was so intense. I think Goel too was there. It was, and Stella, what was her son name now? Stella Evo, yeah? The AUCSF choir mistress then. You know, she was sleeping somewhere behind, uh, by the side of the chapel. And she came to me with her, oh, guy, I saw something now. I said, what did you see? I said, as you were worshiping, I saw a vision. I saw you carrying a very big record. And you had, she didn't even know the terminologies for it. You had a stick and a rope. I said, that's a plumb line. He said, okay. He said, it's like you are measuring plots for people. Uh -uh. Uh, you guys were not there. You were at the chapel that morning. Who was there? So I'm not telling you tricks here. Eh? So it's like you are mentioning that you, you are checking that register and you will peg the ground and you will draw the line and you will peg. Ah. And it was that morning while coming to Ibadan that I parked in that place in Okiri. And I didn't tell anybody. So that reinforced me. After Mass 9, Odwayo, Adebayo, Zoe, Zoe. After about two months after Mass, he just called me from the blues. We are not familiar. We are not, I just invited him based because, just because I love the song. It was a blessing to me. We are not so familiar like that. So he called me up one afternoon. I was in Cocoa House, the office in Cocoa House that afternoon. He said, ah, sir, I saw something. I said, what did you see? He said, I'm in traffic or in Lagos. But I don't, he said, I don't know. I think I, have, I still kept that chat, that WhatsApp chat. He said, I don't know what the plan is, but I saw a place like a campground very excellent, like a city, very beautiful. And I saw people of different colors coming in and going out of the gates. You know, he, he said, a place of intimacy. That was what he said. Ah, I said, guy, you are seeing very well, though. 
I said, ah, I even told it to a joke. Go and sharpen your prophetic edge, Joe. You are seeing very accurately. So I told him this story I just told you now. And shortly after Mass 9, I went to redemption camp. After Mass 9, I don't even know what happened. I just flipped, you know. After a major success, I just feel there is more. I just got very angry in my spirit. I was very angry with God, like, God, there is more, man. I'm tired of all this just crusade. I'm tired. There is more. Let's do more. And I went to redemption camp. And I did, I'm sure I was even very broke. I didn't have money to even fill the car. And I strolled into the camp. And my friend, family, today, he heard somebody saw me and told him, he's like, evangelist is in the camp. He now called me. I told you to show one car. I said, I'm in camp. I came to retreat. And you didn't tell me. I've told you anytime you're in camp. Your hotel is always on me. Ah. So that's why it took me to Peace Court. I didn't even have money for it. I wanted to just be in the auditorium and just, God is me and you until you tell me something new. And the first night, I went to the old auditorium, prayed, like every other person goes there to pray, nothing, no voice from heaven, nothing. Second night, by the time I knelt down at the altar, I always have that spot. The Holy Spirit told me, no, tonight is not for praying. <laughs> What's tonight for? He said, tonight is a Jericho walk. I said, okay. I said, go around this auditorium seven times. And I will give you the sequence. First three times, just worship me. The next three times, speak in tongues. The last time, declare. Anything you declare. It takes about one hour, 30 minutes to go around that auditorium. Even if you are, if you are like, you know, the way the people pray. So that's like about nine hours of trekking. This was about 11.30, about 10.30 at, at night. So I started. By the third time, my legs were not moving anymore. I was, you know, you want to move. That was, that was the first day I experienced what it meant to be lame. When somebody is lame, I will, you know, so I had to start doing like this. Do you understand? By the seventh time, <laughs> I was crawling. I feel like crying, seriously. I was crawling because these legs could not go anymore. And by the time I returned back to the last point, the Holy Spirit told me, first thing, He told me many things that night. He said, the first property I'm going to give the mass movement is going to be about the exact size of this old auditorium. My heart could not contain it. I just wrote it down. I, I did not even tell my wife until about a week or two ago, this encounter. Because my, my, do you understand? My heart could not, that was when I knew it was from God. Because when God unveils something to you, ah, it will be completely unrealistic. So that vision that you call a vision right now, you are not seeing anything. You are not seeing right. If you can understand the full scope of what you are seeing right now, it's no vision, you are not seeing. Ha! Ah. Lord! So I wrote it down in my diary. Um, swag, come forward. DJ Swag, come forward. I saw him somewhere, come forward. For you to know, God, when I say God is a comedian, I don't joke. Guys, <clears throat> okay. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> DJ Swag comes for mass meetings all the way from Ajebo village. Ajebo by, by Four Square Camp. He comes for every meeting from that place. I didn't even know him. I did. What were we discussing about that you chatted me for the first time? All I just remember is, when we started looking for location for Revival Bandits, I think we had a conversation. I don't know whether you, want, you are the one who started it. I, okay, I posted a church that I need an old church like this. So he responded, ah, we have something like this in our side. I said, what side? He said, Ajebo side. I said, I've never entered that place before. I only drive by. I said, okay, one of these places from Ibadan, I will check. So one of those days I called him. We went around checking and they had a lot of, so that was the conversation. Somewhere in between the conversation became land. I saw four square. Ah, so, well, I'm busy in real real. I thought, what about I? You know, and that's how, like play, but I was fixated on revival bandits. So, a lot of you are wondering why we have no shots. <laughs> I was just fixated on revival bandits. And the conversation started like play, like play, like play. So, when I was in UK, he chatted me. There was one, oh, ah, this is this, this is the that. What is the amount? He called the amount. I loved it. Ah, but where can we see this money? Before I came back from the UK, it was taken. I was very devastated. But I just let it go. What, God, at this point, I don't even care anything you want to do. 
So when I flew back to, H- to Houston, he chatted me again. Ah, there is another one, sir. This one is even better. It is what you want. You've always wanted an address on Lagos by the expressway. You wanted something visible on the express. He said, this one is directly on the express. I said, fantastic. At that point, I didn't even care about price. My faith was large enough to accommodate anything. You know. And we started going further and back. He sent me the survey. And somewhere in between, I came back from Houston. And I called uh, Chigo and Emmanuel. They were the people I could, I could see that day. Okay, can you guys go to help me check this place? Because I had to go pick my children in school. Do you understand? At Abeokuta that day. So on my way back from Abeokuta, they were calling me, ah, Emmanuel and Chigo, eh, ah, sir, I think it'd be better you come and sit yourself, oh, eh, it's like this, eh, it's like that. They were shy. it was not like, it wasn't sounding like they were recommending or they were, do you understand, they were discouraging, it was just sounding so much. And the Holy Spirit told me, said, Toluti, you had better just go to that place right now. Do you know the covenant I have with you? Anywhere By that time, I was already at that international bureau at Shagamu. So as I got on the express, I just begged my children, babes, please, I know you've not eaten, but today, let's assume we are fasting. And I faced back the express. And the moment I got on that land, these encounters I told you are totally forgotten, completely. As I got on the land, and we were having conversations, went round, I remember that morning. I remembered, I just, I remembered the way I was writing it in that diary. Ah! I said, please, a minute. I went to call camp. Femi, can you get me the size of the old auditorium? I said, I don't know. I said, well, let me call projects. I said, okay, please. I need that information right now. When they called me back and told me the size, <laughs> I went to meet the guy. So, how much can we scoop right now from this place? How much can we scoop right now? That's the total we can get. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before God. It was exactly the same size. 30,000 square meters. I said, go and bring the anointing in my car. They didn't understand what's I'm sure, I'm sure the guy that was selling that was even looking like anointing about where it is at this Orobu now. Do you understand? That was the video you saw. I said, go and bring the anointing for me first. Let me take charge. Let me claim spiritual ownership before we take physical ownership. At the time I was saying that prayer, we didn't have a dime. Except maybe some pounds on the I came back to the UK. Came back from the UK for administration, some preaching meetings. We didn't have, the day I was praying that prayer, that's why I put the dates so you can see the timeline. 4 of November to 8 of November. And by 8 of November, we already made a very bulk deposit for the land. May 20, I was saying it to you like a joke at Bible Guest House, Samonda, when I played that video. And if you remember very well, I said, as God liveth, before the close of 2023, we will make, we will commit, there was a say I said it, we will, we, will, we will make payment. There was a way I coined it, I need to go and check about that video. At Bible Guest House. Today is 25th November 2023. <laughs> So when I say let's pray territorial prayers, I don't pray what I don't know. It, you might find it very interesting that that month in Lagos, the, the hub in Lagos that month, the theme of our prayer for that month was territorial conquest. Any Lagos person? Somebody chatted me they came from Lagos this morning. Anybody from Lagos? One or two people chatted me they came from Lagos. You came from Lagos. God bless you. The theme of that prayer for that month of November was territorial conquest conquest and it was in that same month some people make history happen hmm? some watch history happen some tell people what happened uh, the people that tell people what happened they were once part of the people making things happen uh, that fell by the wayside so they're always familiar they always have information they will tell you like that but what happened the cloud of glory had bypassed 
he has since moved. I want you to pray for some few minutes. That's why I played that video. To embolden you. I don't need any further proof to tell you <laughs> that God is not joking with the mass movement. I don't joke with God, so he can't joke with anything that I've committed my hands to. I don't know about you. One thing I think we need to pray for, because I did actually come here with the prayer points. The only thing instruction he gave me is just do an impartation of flight. That's why I bring my bag. I brought my international passports. If you have your international passports, bring them. Just hold them. Just hold them with you. I will call for them. I, I struggled with it because it's, not, it's very unlike me. I believe I can pray to God and He can do anything from wherever I am. That's my belief. But for God to instruct this, I don't like it. I don't want it. But for Him to instruct this, He has a plan. You have seen. God bless you, uh, DJ Swag. It was true that that conversation started. God bless you. You know, as you have seen in all these teachings, if you have really been following, if you have not watched one and two, go and watch. You can see that there is a requisite wisdom that can give leverage in life. I told you a story of one minute, right? Just some days ago when I was called by Father of Faith to see him, I know the protocol. I do not appear in front of any Christian authority empty-handed. It is a kingdom rule. There was an amount in my head. We didn't have up to that in my account. I was okay. Oh yeah, ATM, use the ATM, go and withdraw this amount. Oh yeah, what do you have in your Oh yeah, borrow me. I borrowed money to give, a, to give offering. Not because he called the CEDO. The following day, I got one minute. <laughs> you know, it's like Kalu Kalu. God is not a magician though, but he saw my heart. I didn't give in expectation of anything. I just have that rule. I will not go into the presence of any authority empty-handed. It is a kingdom protocol. There is a wisdom, as you can see in all those teachings. There is a wisdom that gives leverage in life. That you even require less power intervention. Life will just be unfolding in series. When I was coming for my, that March 20 meeting, I had to beg my architect friend, please, can you create a 3D model for me? He said, for what? Have you found the land? I said, no, I've not seen any land. But just give me something to see. He said, ah, I don't understand. I said, if I cannot see, I can't get. Do you understand? And my problem is on this landed matter. I'm not seeing anything. So can you just do a mock-up? That's like, that thing was absolutely nonsense compared to what he can do. For what I've seen him do. I knew he just did that to like, shall sure, sure familiar, my Lord, because I was pestering him, but he was good enough for me. All I needed was to just see something. And the moment he sent me that video, I always go to the presence of God with that video. God, I know it's even beyond this because what I have in my mind right now is even beyond this design. What I will sketch in my mind is better than this. But this is the framework. We started from seven acres. Now we are on eight point something. We're almost going to nine. And I asked God, how do you call nine acres a city? He said, no. He's, he said, it's not about the size of what you bought. It's about the fact that the moment you take seat in that place, your influence begins to color that entire ecosystem so that even every subsequent property that will be bought around you takes the life of that place. He said, how much, what was the land original purchase of Redemption Camp? But where is everybody called? Ashe, Ashe, everywhere. Shimawa, what is it called? Redemption City. Said, so it's not about the size of what you bought. It is about your presence in that place. But I'm sure somebody has appetite to pray. I showed you that video to pray. There is a wisdom I wanted to cry to God for. Ha, Oluwa. Nigeria does not give you any advantage right now. This is why you need these teachers. You don't have any social safety net, oh, unlike your friends that are born abroad. Everybody has to leverage something. That's why people are joining the occult. If you're a believer, the only thing you can leverage is the power of the Holy Ghost, oh. And let me tell you, if you want to leverage, leverage properly at the capacity of God, not at the capacity of what you can see within your adubo, can somebody cry to God for that wisdom in the next 10 minutes? Just keep the keyboard flowing for them. Cry to God for that wisdom. God, I need your wisdom. The wisdom that makes Daniel to outshine Babylon, that makes Daniel to be profound in Babylon, that made Daniel and the four Hebrew brothers to be outstanding in Babylon. My Father and my God, let it rest over my life in the name of Jesus. Are you praying already? Abalo Sareke. Ive Kelimano Takorisa Pariandosa. Ivile Kerisa Hando. Ebeliza Radamosata. Every 
Avocate à la Mosa, la Mosa. Oh Lord, let there be a baptism of wisdom in this room. Let there be a baptism of wisdom in this room. Lord, as your children are crying unto you, my Father. As your children are crying unto you, my Father. Let there be a baptism, oh God. Lord, it is not our design that people will just come and volunteer and have a good time and go away. Lord, we want their lives to know a lift that is a complete departure from where they are coming from. Lord, wisdom. Baptism of wisdom. Baptism of wisdom. Knowing what to do, when to do, where to do. Knowing what to do, when to do, where to do, is the secret of leverage. Is the secret of what we call overnight lifting. Can you cry to Jesus this evening? Aparoski telekebo shatalama na swata. Ifrepe telekebo silokotora. Uvali karasa kalamano soto bosha. Ruve de kalamano siyakata. Allah kadebo shata. Ereve telekebo soto bosha. If you can lay your hands upon your head. Lay your hands upon your head. Lord, let there be an impartation of wisdom. Wisdom to navigate godless systems. Wisdom to navigate evil systems. Wisdom to navigate godless systems. Perakoti na nebo shata. Ivre kieto sono bosha. Ivre padosiko lori bene bosha. Evre kieto na bosha. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. That will not make me to compromise my testimony with you. That will not make me to compromise my testimony with you. That will not make me to compromise my testimony with you. Eleve kelebo shata. I pray koti leke bo soto. Evita kalama na bo soto bosha. Ovri koto li seke bo shata ba. Eleve kelebo shata. Please help me check them online and then show other people there online. How many people are there? Rock koto li preke bo sata li mana bo shata. Evre pe koto li soto bo shata. I lavri ato se keti mana bo se. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying, people of God? Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing in all thy getting. In all thy getting. Don't be too tired to pray, my brothers. Don't be too tired to pray, my sisters. Invest today into your destiny. Invest today into your destiny. Evelekebosa, kakura palike tani mene. Evlekura so pianto lakadaba. Some of you will find yourself in nations of the earth, different nations of the world, that we require some intricate wisdom, that we require some complex navigation. Evekilo sata, evrapado soto kebosa. Let everybody be praying. Even if you are behind the cameras, be praying. Even like a shata, apra koki kemoni ya tori pa like a shata. Vatala manata, vatama la tali kete pro soto di kebosha. Ifra pes kati re pe like a bosha. Ori ofa kato la bosha. E re pe like a bosha. Can you help me put Isaiah 55.5 on the screen? Isaiah 55.5 Oh, river takara mana toka no boso Ele frian katene ke bosa, roki andosa Ele frian kete bo rakoti ande bo shata Ele vede ke sata Ele vede ke sata raka Ruva da kala mana ma asia te boso Ruva da ka osa There is always a limiting pattern Over every city There is a principality Over every nation those that will fly, we fly by the power of the Holy Spirit to break through such demonic and evil networks. Is somebody crying this evening? Fill me with your power, Holy Spirit! Fill me with your power! And me, 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 Fill me with a fresh dose of your power. My horn is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I'm anointed with fresh oil. My horn shall be exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I'm anointed with fresh oil. Can you begin to pray for fresh oil? Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing for lifting. I don't know.
know what it is about you. Whether in enterprise, whether in ministry, whether in career, fresh oil, fresh oil. My own is exalted. My own is exalted. My horn is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I'm anointed with fresh oil. My horn is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I'm anointed with fresh oil. Let me say to Yoruba, if I'm your Rorunyo Tutu, if I'm your Rorunyo Tutu, fresh unction, fresh baptism, fresh baptism, a fresh infilling, because the word of the Lord says, not by power. Not by might, but by my spirit. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Ovria Calabosa, Eflepe de Gaboso Rocota, Eliva Daka, wherever you are, can you look at the screen? Can you look at the screen wherever you are? Isaiah 55 5. Isaiah 55 5. This is one of the Hancock scriptures I've been praying on while believing God for the nations. This is one of my key Hancock scriptures. We are getting to that zone right now where we want to decree the nations open, where we want to decree the gates and territories, door posts of nations to open up unto us. Are you ready to read? He said, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall. Hey, lay, lay, hey, hey, hey. Prayer point number one Thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. There are nations you have not even heard of, nations you have not even seen, that by inheritance has been apportioned to you by destiny. You will call that nation. And that nation shall run to you. Words of recommendation start going on in your name. In corridors you don't even know existed. In companies you are not aware existed. And people will be collecting your CVs and they'll be, ah, can somebody say this afternoon? I call nations. Uh, begin to call nations. Uh, begin to call nations. Uh, begin to call nations. Uh, where is that nation? Where is that nation that you have been assigned to? Where is that nation that you have been apportioned to? Where is that nation that your feet is needed to be stamped on the soil? Can you call for these nations? United States, I summon you. United Kingdom, I summon you. The length and breadth of Nigeria, I summon you. From the North Pole to the southern flank of Africa, I summon you. I call you forth. If you have your passport here, just raise it up as you are praying that prayer for yourself. If you bring, if you brought your international passports as instructed, raise it up and begin to pray. If you haven't raised it up and begin to decree, I call for nations. I call for nations. Where is that nation? Begin to call for that nation. Ask of me, and I will give unto you. Father's lands, even far country, I will give unto you as a takeaway. Where is that country? Where is that industry? Where is that enterprise? Where is that place of domiciliation that you believe by inheritance you have been positioned? That you believe by inheritance you have been instructed? That you believe by inheritance you have been sent? Can you begin to call for this nation right now in the name of Jesus? Oh, river the God that is opening the doors of nations unto me. I call for South America. I call for the entire northern flank of the Americas. I call for the corridors of Europe. I call for the Middle East. I call for the Asian nations. I call for Australia. I call for the Scandinavian islands. I call for New Zealand. I call for every continent of the world. As far as there is air, as far as there are humans and there is air, not because you have called us to the nations, not because this is a mandate that you have called us to the nations. This is a mandate that is global and we are already seeing the activity. Can you cry to God some more? Can you cry to God some more? Can you petition heaven some more? Can you petition heaven some more? If you are believing God for scholarships, begin to pronounce it. 
begin to decree it. You are believing God for international fellowships, PhD openings, masters, missionary doors of ministries, missionary doors of ministry, and apostle to the nations. Begin to instruct, begin to decree. Lift up your heads, all you gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Let the King of Glory come in. Let the King of Glory come in. Let the King of Glory come in. I reckon about Satan.